All right, well, here I am with Wyatt Gilmore, the co-founder of Grant Stone Boots. And uh, I just wanna start by saying, Wyatt, I'm very excited to be doing this interview with you. Um, it's a huge honor. I've been a big fan of your brand for years now. Uh, you've made some of the best shoes and boots that I have. Um, I can't say enough good things about your Leo Last. It's probably the most comfortable last I've ever experienced in my life. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of fangirling out right now getting to talk to you. So, uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank, thank you for, you know, having me. And, yeah, I, I remember the first couple of videos and everything. I mean, that goes back a couple of years ago now. So, um, yeah, thanks for your support. And, I mean, I, I think if you search Grant Stone on YouTube, um, mm -hmm. over the last couple of years, I mean, yeah, your, your videos are, I'm sure they've helped us a lot. We've had people refer to them a lot too, um, when they send in emails and things like that. So yeah, yeah you, awesome. your uh, check is in the mail. Okay. Awesome. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, yeah. yeah and, and that's another thing I, I do want to sort of make clear about my channel is, you know, I don't, um, I don't, I'm very objective. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not doing this for monetization. My, my YouTube channel is not monetized. I sure. see do it for the love of the of the craft and of the shoes and of the boots and that's the whole thing. So if you don't owe me a, a dime, sir, if anything, I owe you uh, I owe you a few checks. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, so and and I think yeah, touched on touching on what we were talking about earlier. You know, I think that is the appeal of of my of my channel is just the fact that you know I'm not coming at it from like an advertiser type of an angle. It's more like, Hey, I got these and I freaking love them. You know what I mean? That's, that's been my approach from the get go. It's, it's like a, it's almost like a show and tell like, uh, Hey, check these out. These are, these are phenomenal. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, and, and we kind of see that on our side, just, we can kind of talk about our shoes as much as, as we'd like to, but yeah, you know, customers who are really looking to buy their first pair or something. I mean, they take all that with a grain of salt. And so even yeah. reviews on our website from other people, you know, people kind of like, yeah, well, they can filter out things, right? Or they can, you know, they just don't exactly trust it. So people really enjoy it. To, I mean, they get on Reddit, you know, style form, your your videos on YouTube, things like that. Um, I mean, they, they want to see really from like true customers who don't, you know, they're not linked to the brand in some way or, you know, on our website. So, yeah, we, we see that quite a bit. Yeah, I, I believe it. And uh, actually, what's funny is, you know, when I got started on YouTube, it was because uh, the, I was following this. Well, yeah, there was basically a gap that I saw and there was the, basically, I was looking for a lot of content about indie boots because that was my first boot love was the indie boot. Cause I grew up as an Indiana Jones fan. And, uh, so, you know, it was that lore of the indie boot that really captured me. You know, it was like, Whoa, it, Harrison Ford loved this boot so much that he wore them in the films. And, you know, these are iconic films that I grew up watching. And uh, so I, I go on YouTube and I'm looking for Alden reviews, people talking about Aldens. And what I saw, there wasn't, there wasn't actually that much out there. And uh, I thought, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to start doing this. I'm just, right. you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I have no idea how, how to start a YouTube channel. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just going to start the conversation and, and kind of see where it leads. And, uh, and yeah, so, and that is part of the, that's that's basically why I got the channel started and um I'm really blown away by just the the response that I've gotten so far it's just like the boot community really is such they're just such a positive community you know what I mean yeah. it's it's non-controversial it's it's just nothing but love of these leathers love of the build love of the craft love of the brands and uh and and you know the enthusiasts the, the enthusiasm around the boots that's what keeps me making videos because it's just amazing. You know what I mean? Like the, the network. Yeah, that's, that's hard to find online. Yeah, it is for sure. For sure. So I'm glad and I'm honored actually that you've taken the time to watch my videos because you know, I do, I film them all on this thing right here. Edited. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, this is it. Like I film it on my tripod. I, uh, I edit it in iMovie and then I post it to YouTube. That's, that's it. Like there's no fancy, Right. Like that's it. So it's a very minimalist, simplistic approach, but you know, at the same time, that's what keeps me cranking them out. So because yeah, of yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, it, again, this is just a big honor and I'm sorry if I ramble because I've been taking notes and 
Yeah. I have a thousand points I want to get to. I doubt oh, we will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, I think probably the best way to to really get started here is I haven't actually um, posted these yet on my on my uh, Instagram yet, but so I posted these. These are my Edward boots in natural shell cordovan. Um, and thank you, Watch yep. Factory, because if it weren't for Grant Stone, I wouldn't have any natural shell. So <laughs> it's such a right. Yeah, it's such it's such a rare, you know. I, I'm I'm on some of the lists to get some of the rare Alden shell makeups, but man, it's like, you know, you gotta wait years, and it's like, yeah, that that that's tough, you know. So I just got on yeah. a list probably a year ago, and uh, you know, I'm just so thankful for the way that you guys do it. It's like, here's this pre-order, jump on it if you want to. Um, you know, it's not like this super hard to tap into system and that that's what i really appreciate about the grandstand approach so yeah so oh, yeah thank you i mean it's i i don't truly quite understand a, a lot of the the ins and out of like the shell and and yeah how much you can get and different colors and things like that um but yeah i think it's it's kind of common knowledge that just it's 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 pretty tough to come by, but also the ones they're using for footwear, the shells they use for footwear has to be a certain size, a certain thickness. Um, and right. yeah, I would say that that definitely will play a role into it. Um, and then of course the lighter colors, I mean, they can be a real pain. Um, yeah. A perfect example is it, it might be a little bit more of just personal preference, but I know you had um, had shown the, the medial side of one of your boots and yeah. it has like that membrane exactly kind of look to it. I'm sure you know, I'm not sure if you can see it there, but you know, there's kind of like a, a draw, there's natural marks inside the shell. It's not like this pigmented, clear, perfect, you know, surface, but I mean, that is, that is natural shell. And so when we started first getting these shells in and cutting them and making samples, of course, that's everyone's kind of concern, um, you yeah. know, at the factory and stuff, they're like, you know, are you, are you sure people will be okay with this? You know, and it's like, well, not really, but you know, we have to match in pairs and kind of do the same process as we do the other, you know, lighter colors like the saddle tan and stuff, which we do get pairs back, you know, if they're if someone says, well, hey, I thought it'd be really consistent or something. Um, okay. which it, just, it just won't be the case. I mean, you'll get some pairs like that, but you know, that's also kind of not really the beauty of shell to begin with, you know, um, it's like the complete opposite of, you know, a pigmented uh, leather you'd find in a Prada bag, you know, it's like the complete opposite of that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, the, and the light colors, they're definitely a pain though. That's, and, and, you know, it's concerning, you know, if, if you had to make a bunch of them and ship them out, it'd be pretty, pretty scary. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I can, I can, I can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me personally, this is my personal pref, pref, preference. I am not a perfectionist at all. And I love that character. When I see that, I kind of wish the whole boot looked like this, like the marble. I, you know, right. I love it because these are boots, they're going to break in, they're going to get scratched, they're going to get blemishes, they're going to, you know, they're going to form the rolls along the vamp there. And, right. you know, I want them sort of as interesting to look at as possible. And I love, I just, I love the striations, I love the depth, I love the character that, you know, so if anything, I would say, like, moving forward, give me the most crazy looking shell um, right. that you, you have in the factory and make my boots out of that because I, yeah, and it, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's that I mean that is just the shell itself, and so it's yeah. it's kind of sometimes when someone wants something perfect, which we really we haven't had too many issues yet with with the natural shells. More of us kind of anticipating, you know, because some of the panels are different colors and stuff. But okay, yeah, I mean most of the customers they are they they are kind of looking for something pretty interesting, you know. And I mean they're they're buying a, a six seven hundred dollar shell cordovan boot, and so they they kind of know, I think, and they, and they appreciate that. So we haven't had two issues with that, but you know, that's a daily, a daily topic for, you know, a Chrome Excel or a calf, you know, making something that, you know, you, they're not cookie cutter, but yeah, I mean, you want them to kind of just look at the pair itself and not compare it to the next one because it's different leather. It's, you know, it's a different product kind of. Right. That's, that's definitely true. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. Like, and, and even I, I see you guys, sort of have a partnership going with Ashland Leather. And that yeah. is, yeah, Phil, and that's where I saw, and I watched your interview with him too, by the way, fantastic interview. Um, 
you, you present yourself very well professionally, like spot on, like you're just, yeah, I, I try. Yeah. I try to. <laughs> I, I, I think, by the way, I think you just do a very good job with interviews. Like you showed up, you, 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 you were direct, you were informative. It was, it wasn't boring at all. You just kept the conversation going and like, you know, perfect professionalism. So I commend you there, sir. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, <laughs> Ashland Parker, that was the first time I ever heard of these, these uh, marbled black shell cordovans and these marbled color eight shell cordovans and the reverse shell, like just crazy stuff. And it's like, I want boots made out of all that. Like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they do. They come out with some pretty some pretty crazy products. Yeah, for sure. The most crazy recently that I saw is that uh, in it's intense violet or I forget what it's called. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like an intense. It's like it's basically hot pink. It's like the the most neon hot pink you could imagine. And they just that's a shell color. I had no idea. You know. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> It's probably the one color I wouldn't get in a boot, you know, <laughs> but yeah, maybe, maybe not that one. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. So, and, and, uh, you don't have to answer this by the way, but, um, I did want to ask if, if there's any, um, more rare shell coming down the line from Grant Stone that we could be, uh, look forward to. And again, you don't, no pressure. Um, no, I, yeah, but we're, we're trying to get into some different colors. Um, it's, it's kind of more about availability because it is limited and, and, you know, the tanneries, they have their longstanding customers they've been working with for forever. Right. And yeah. so they, they can't just kind of, I can't kind of go to them and just say, well, Hey, I'd like this one and, and ship it, you know, in four months or something just because they have to, you know, take care of their customers, you know, as well. So, um, they're right now, I think we have one coming up. That's going to be like, uh, it's almost like a dark cognac color. So more, more towards like the brown spectrum versus this kind of natural, which would be, that would be a new one for us. Um, yes. Something more in the, in the middle, more like a brown instead of real, real light. Um, yeah. So that, that'd be really exciting. So we, yeah. I think we just got those shells now and we're going to play around with some swatches. Uh, I don't have them here. So, um, you know, my, my colleague there, we're going to just, she's going to cut them up and, try a few of the different stains that we, that we've done previously on those and, and see kind of which one we want to go with. And then we'll probably pick a couple patterns, sample them, and then we'll do a pre-order for it. Whoa. Awesome. Okay. Well, yeah. okay. I'm, I'm down for an Edward boot and uh, I'm also down for some, uh, some long wing bleachers. Oh. Okay. So if, if, uh, if you, if you want to make those for me, I'll, uh, I'll gladly pay sure. for them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, I, I leave that process to you guys, but, uh, but yeah, in all seriousness though, if, if you just stuck to this, I'd probably get every color of shell that you guys run. Like, and I've, I've been telling people that they come to my Instagram asking me, you know, asking me, Oh, should I jump on the Grant stone shell, you know, on these reverse or sorry, on these uh, natural shells. And I'm like, if you've been following boots, as long as I've been following boots, first off, you know, that this is, this isn't just a boot that you're buying. This is an opportunity. I mean, this, this opportunity does not present itself every day you can't just order these you know what i mean it's so oh, yeah. rare and and especially at that price point i'm like dude i don't know what you're smoking but you need to jump on them because uh you're not going to have this opportunity in a couple months and right. you want to wait on a list for years to get the same thing again so like and you're just you're gonna you know so that's why i, I tell people like when they ask me questions like so how's grant stone shell i'm like well first off it's not it's horween shell it's the same shell that everybody uses and uh and second off yeah get them because <laughs> they're they're making it easy for you you know what i mean <laughs> so. yeah and i mean we we've been trying to think of different ways and try to do uh, play out a few different scenarios where we can actually stock and have some inventory but yeah. the, the few times we kind of tested with other styles or patterns in sku it's just it, it's tough you know it's a lot it's a lot of money in inventory sitting and then the main thing is you have it back there, but sometimes an AD is just selling really well. And then yeah. you have people who are like, well, Hey, I want an AD and mm -hmm. they're sold out. And it just doesn't, you know, meanwhile you have four other sizes that are just kind of sitting there for, for months on end. Um, oh, and guys like, well, I want a 10 D and you're like, yes, yeah, so we sold out of that too. And so it's the pre-order seems to be working pretty well as, as far as like the demand that we currently have. 
it's kind of like anyone who really wants it, they can get in on it and they, they have their boots in, in a few months kind of thing or four months. Um, but right. yeah, it's, yeah, the inventory part of it, it would be really nice. Of course, a lot of brands do that, you know, but yeah, you have to know what you're doing there with the inventory and make sure that uh, you have your size runs down, yeah. right, you know. Yeah, got to get that thing secured. Yeah, in fact, um, it wasn't long after you guys ran up here there, the Ottawa booth, Natural Shell. I jumped on those, and uh, I want to say I put in my pre-order for these, and then probably just a couple weeks later, I, I'll never forget it. I was sitting in uh, at my favorite sushi restaurant. Yeah, and I got I got this email from you guys saying, "Oh, by the way, this is our Edward boot in Natural Shell. You want to get on, in on it?" And like it wasn't a decision. Like I clicked, entered my size, pay, like done. Like it was that much of a no brainer. Like I, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> that was yeah. my process. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that particular boots, probably one of my favorite we've, that we've made is, is the, uh, the Edward plain toast natural shell, just because we were just kind of talking about that before we went live here. Just the, the vamp itself is a nice big piece of natural shell. And so, yeah, it just there's there's a lot of character there, you know, and it's just a, a really big panel, you know, on both sides, and so it's a really interesting boot. And with all that shell, it's just kind of inevitable too. They're just they they, they smell like shell. That's like the best smelling, you know, material ever, and oh. it's just it's just pretty awesome, you know. But yeah, I hope we can get a few more colors, and and we'll continue that boot because I think so far that's probably been the most um, popular or highest demand for a pattern on shell is that Edward boot. So yeah. Right. That makes sense because, you know, it hits, it checks all the boxes. First off, it's got, you know, that nice collapsed toe and you guys use smaller eyelets in it as compared to the Ottawa boot. You know, I love it. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can see the difference in laces there in the, uh, in the Edwards, right. I've got more of a dressy cotton lace because of those thin eyelets. I think the thin eyelets really complement the, the aesthetic of the boot. And then, you know, moving up to the Ottawa, it's like thicker, you know, wider eyelets, which accommodates, you know, the nice raw hides. And, uh, and yeah, it's just a completely different look altogether. I love both. They're both just fascinating. But, uh, but yeah, that Edward model, oh my God, you just, you guys nailed it with that design. Yeah. And, and that's one thing that I started to pick up on was like, it's almost like the dressier the, the boot gets, the you know, the thinner the eyelets and the more collapsed the toe is. And th there's a certain element and, and you could go along the spectrum from dressy to more of a boot look, which in my opinion, the, the wider eyelets give it more of that rugged, give it a little bit more of a rugged look, especially with the rawhide laces. So yeah. this is sort of inching more towards work boot territory. You know, it's not all the way there. It's, you know, it's along the spectrum, but this is like, this is a dress boot right here. You know, that's yeah. A, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, just fantastic. I'm just, uh, I'm utterly, utterly pleased with these. And, uh, and yeah, I really look forward to your future shell makeups because you guys just knock them out of the park. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Thanks. Hopefully we can keep them going, at, you know, three, four, probably close to three or four times a year. You know, that's what I kind of like to do. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That, I think that's a good pace. You know, it allows us to sort of, uh, Re recuperate you know financially right. <laughs> yeah, seriously yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's good you know it's good that you're not hitting us with a barrage like with an assault of like all these amazing boots that we <laughs> that we just can't let we just can't right. let them pass us by you know <laughs> so <laughs> right. yeah so and actually so right here so i haven't posted these yet i haven't announced them officially yet on my instagram but I did get, Santa did come this past week. Um, so along with the Edward boot, I also got the Storm Kudu. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's the, maybe a February pre-order or something like that. That was a while back, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so, and man, they just, they smell amazing. I've taken them out already and uh, examined them, man. The character on these is just, I mean, Probably my favorite thing about these so far is the eyelets. eyelets. I, I believe these are nickel or gunmetal eyelets. Yeah, I think we just call them gunmetal, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just, man, such a, such a fantastic 
idea. I'm glad I'm glad we didn't go with brass on this because the the gunmetal really accentuates the gray look of the kudu and yeah. from kudu and man they, they they smell fantastic and uh yeah I really can't wait to start breaking these in. They got that nice look tool. Cool. When you look at the swatch for that color, it, it kind of looks it's a light enough gray where it might be a little bit like we put an actual skewer boot and then for people to wear it with, you know, everyday clothes, whether it's, you know, kind of dem denim and t-shirts and dress shirts, whatever. But actually, yeah, the final product, it, it's not, it's not that loud actually, you know, and it, it kind of goes with, you know, mainly a lot of blues and grays and things like that. So it's, it's not like something too crazy, you know, you can wear it and, and it's not, standing out and all that you know definitely definitely yeah and uh yeah just the character of it it's it's so amazing it's it's a lightweight leather too i love that it's like it's got almost like more of a dry feel to it like right. that's what kudu feels like and uh yeah it just like like you were talking about earlier the, the smell like the smell of shell is amazing but the smell of kudu also from the when it comes from by the way how do you pronounce it is it I, I call it Charles F. Stead. Is it Charles F. Steed or Charles F. Stead? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't know actually. I've always said Stead, but um, yeah. you know, I, I guess I've never said his his last name in front of him. But yeah, it'd be a good question to see how they how they actually pronounce it. But yeah, maybe Stead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's how that's how I read it. Anyways, some people say yeah. Steed. Um, for the longest time, I was like I was calling Shell Cordovan. I was calling it Shell Cordovan. Because you know, um, I I know some Spanish, so I was like kind of reading it right. from Spanish mindset, and uh, and no shell court every, like it's unanimous. Everybody says shell court of him except for me, so I I finally switched it. But yeah, you're just falling in line, but you're ahead of the curve. It's probably yeah. yeah. My hope should have been said, yeah. Right, I'm sure, I'm sure. And uh, oh, another topic I wanted to bring up is that of the leather sole. Yeah. Uh, so. So you have probably one of the most interesting takes on the leather sole that I've ever heard because when I got into nice boots, I was taking my all my leather soled shoes and getting that Vibram protective thing installed on. And but then on my YouTube channel, I started getting comments. People were saying, um, "Oh, you just ruined you just ruined the shoe, or you just ruined the boot." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? How did I ruin it?" And uh, and I didn't. Nobody was answering the question. And I'm like, this is driving me nuts because I take them to a cobbler. The cobbler is happy to install that vibrant protective sole. Finally, somebody came back to me and they said, well, it's because the uh, something about something about it doesn't allow for the sole to flex properly. And it actually kind of suffocates the sole from flexing the way that it's meant to, like by the way that the manufacturer designed it, if that makes sense. But um, I was so long story short. Um, so with this pair here, the Ottawa's in bourbon suede, I decided to not get the Vibram protective sole yeah. installed because I just wanted to see like how well does this hold up. And so far it's been holding up great. I mean, it hasn't worn down in the least bit. And and so I just kind of wanted to get your take on on installing those Vibram leather protective, these rubber protective soles. Uh, as far as like it flexing or it harming i i've never heard that before um i i'm not too sure about that i mean the only thing i would say is just it's it's really it's almost like having the same conversation as do you remember like um like when when phones started with being glass and they had these big touch screens and like especially like the iphones came out everyone would buy these like clear protector things yes. out, you know um and I remember like in an article they're saying someone asked Steve Jobs about that and he's like, I mean, do you buy clear film for your three hundred dollar like readers? Right. You know? sure. it, it's kind of similar. It's just like you are further protecting the outsole, like just just that part of it. Um but the one thing I would say is I, I don't know about like the allowing it to to I mean of course it's going to affect the way it it you know it bends a little bit but probably not probably not an issue but um it's probably more of just you know a shoe a, a last it has a, like a recessed heel right it, it's sitting up so you have to create a heel for each last and depending on how the last the tread is you 
you know, you make this heel and then it has, you know, a measurement, a total height, the front of the heel, the back of the heel. And so that allows the actual finished shoe to tread correctly. So okay. like, for example, we can't just take a, a random heel and throw it on the Ottawa boot or our Leo last boot or shoe because it might sit too high, too low, and then you might have a heel kick in the front or back. Oh, interesting. So the only thing with putting a copy like on the front, on the fore part of the sole, is now your shoe. I mean, you're going to be leaning back because you're, you're making the, the touching point, the ball, a little bit taller, but you're not addressing the heel at all. So it's not going to tread the way the last was designed to. Um, but at the same time, if you're talking about a two or three millimeter rubber piece, it's not going to be, you know, just totally off, but it, it will feel different. You know, it will feel different because two or three millimeter, um, if we took that off the heel, I think most of our heels are like close to 10 millimeters in the front and maybe like 14 in the back. Okay. I mean, if you take if it that way at three millimeters, it's, it's a pretty big difference though. So I, I mean, some people would put it on and I can tell, and some people would be like, whoa, I'm like leaning back because yeah. I've got this three, four millimeter. And I don't, I'm not sure how thick those vibrams are like in the ball area, the touching point, but yeah, yeah it would, it would change the, the treading a little bit on the shoe. Um, and as far as like the wearer of the outsole goes, I mean, yeah, those, those leather bends, I mean, we use really thick bends. They're five millimeters. Usually uh, those midsoles, we, I think on our second year, we changed like two and a half to three millimeter because of course there's a variance every time you make them. And so we just wanted to make sure that the majority were closer to three and not two. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, those are thick outsoles um, compared to, you know, most of what's out there. So they last a long time. Um, right. So whether or not you want to prolong that, I mean, the, the toppy will definitely do that. Putting any type of material on the bottom would, would help prolong it. But yeah, it, it does remind me of that conversation of, you know, putting an otter box, you know, on an iPhone or, or not using anything at all. You know, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it's just kind of personal preference and, and, you know, one will wear quicker than the other type of thing. You know? Yeah, you're, you're totally right. And actually what's funny is my wife is so mad at me because she bought me a uh, protective film on my iPhone and I've just never, I've never, right. I'm still sitting on my nightstand. I'm like, I just, I don't need, I don't feel the need for it. Like the screen right. scratched one bit. I dropped it a thousand times and it's fine. So yeah they call it like the glass they use for the iphone but it's like it's, yeah stuff is absurd that it's so strong you know it's it's, it's crazy. yeah it's true and, yeah. right you're you're right and actually before i was a boot guy i was into watches and this is yep. this this omega seamaster it's got a sapphire crystal on it and it's going on five years old not a single scratch you know they're just they're made right the right way and when they're made right you know you got to kind of trust the product at a certain point. And, uh, you know, yeah. so my, my moving forward, I'm going to stop putting the Vibram protective soles on just to see how they age naturally, how the manufacturer, you know, built it because, uh, because I was actually talking to my one friend, uh, on Instagram, I think it is J dot Z, you know him? Um, no. Okay. Yeah. He, he's, I think he's got, he's got a lot of, He's got a lot of boots, J.Z. Um, I'll have to verify that this was him. He actually reached out to me when I first started making videos and sort of gave me editing tips. And uh, I asked him about the leather, the leather sole issue. And I asked him if he got the Vibram protective layers installed. And he said, no, I look forward to my resole. So uh, he's like, I'm too excited about my resole to have to, uh, you know, to put those on because he, he enjoys the resole process. And I've had a couple boots resold so far, and I got to say, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, what you know, my my stance on it now is, yeah, if these wear out quicker, guess what? I get to have them resold, and I get to pick the new sole. That's exciting, you know. <laughs> yeah, and we frequently have people ask because we have a few boots on leather soles, and the, most of our shoes are leather sole. Just how many years you can get out of it? Um, and yeah, I mean, as you might know, it's 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 impossible really to say just because everyone, you know, whether it's the way you walk, your build, where you live, how often you wear your shoes, it's really, really tough to say. But True. I mean, for someone like yourself who has an array of boots to pull out for the day, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, you're you're talking years and years. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it, it's difficult. I mean, I all the majority, I I prefer kind of the 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 leather sole and everything. And I mean, it's they take forever. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And and hearing your your take, especially you're talking about your grandpa, and yeah. his perspective on the leather sole, like you, you know, asking why would you put rubber on that, you know, that really that really like uh, resonated with me right there because it was, it was like, uh, you know, hearing it from somebody who has so much experience with shoes and boots and making, making them, you know, he's really got sort of a, a an in-depth insight into how, how, a, how a boot and shoe functions. And to hear that, to hear you say that from you from in that uh, Ashlyn leather interview that you did with him, um, that was really profound, and that's where I, that's where I said, you know what, he's he's got a point. There's there's a time for rubber, and there's a time for leather heels. And when he's making the best shoe that he can, he's putting leather soles on and yeah, yeah. letting them ride. You know, that's that's sort of the culture and the mindset that he's coming from. And so, you know, that that's where I said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop with the Vibram protective soles. I'm gonna see. You know, I'm gonna let these ride how they are, and uh, yeah, and this, it's gonna be fun. And uh, I'm excited actually because early on in my boot cr collecting career, you know, I saw these forums where, oh, don't you don't want to wear a leather sole out in the rain, and you'll wear it right down. And it's like I've worn these in the rain dozens of times. Guess what? They're not worn down at all. <laughs> so. Yeah, and it is. It's, I know Josh. He's sitting next to me in the other office here. He he has he like, he loves the penny loafers, you know, like that's, he just kind of wears his penny loafer constantly, yeah. but you know, he'll, he'll do some yard work and, you know, and he golfs and he wearing them to the office. Sometimes he's back in the warehouse, whatever, but he'll wear like one pair, like constantly for right. a little while. And then maybe you wear another one for like another three, four months, but okay. he's, he's gotten to the point where he would wear down, I think one of his soles, but I mean the shoes, he's had it for a couple of years and he wears them constantly. And, and of course, I mean, I'm talking snow or Michigan you know, all that stuff. Cause we're not like commuting we're, we're, we're taking a drive and then taking five steps through snow into the office. So, you know, wearing a, a loafer is not a big deal, but yeah, it's still just, they, they do go a very, very long time. And it wasn't that long ago where it just, you know, a, a nicer dress shoe, especially in these price points. I mean, they just, they just came with leather, you know, and, and um, right. I, I recently posted a photo of my dad's uh, diesel saddle tan boot and it had like a lot of color to it and stuff. It was really kind of dark and is beat up, you know, because he's been wearing it constantly out like on his farm type of thing. And yeah. that boot that's, it has like a wedge on it now, um, or it has the, uh, the ripple sole, but okay. I mean, that boot, it is, it looks like it's been worn for, you know, four or five years. It looks like vintage type of thing. But I mean, before he resold that, you know, two years, in, in water, in rain, mowing the lawn, doing whatever near the barn and, you know, pastures, whatever. So it's, right. yeah, they can definitely, they are more slippery, but I mean, that's, that's kind of, you know, obvious and, and you kind of just walk a little bit, you know, I mean, you know that when you're wearing them, you know, you're probably not taking, you know, he's leaping jumps, uh, you know, off the sidewalks onto, you know, tile and stuff, you know, but yeah, so it, it they do last a long time though. Um, because I mean, rubber wears out as well, you know, it's and true. it's not, you know, I, not the big of a difference, you know? Right. That's true. I mean, ask anybody that drives a car, they, they got to get their tires replaced, you know, pretty frequently. So sure. yeah, it's, it's you're, you're hundred percent right about that. Yeah. Early on I bought, I forget, it was a pair of Portuguese shoes and they had, they were real sleek, you know, that real sleek, which I don't, I don't favor. I favor the more robust, last you know like the leo yeah. last or the alden true balance or you know more more of the traditional like western european last slash american lasts um because those those lasts that are built in the iberian peninsula they're real sleek and narrow and yeah. yep the portuguese the spanish the italian shoes it's like they just they hurt when i wear them but yeah i remember i it was a pair of monk straps and i was wearing them and i was walking in the hallway and my god and they were on leather soles and I just, I was slipping all over the place in those things. <laughs> I haven't had that issue with, with 
your souls though for some reason like yeah that i think it's because of the last and because it's i just feel so well grounded with the leo last i think yeah. my balance is just so much better anyway so it's it doesn't really matter what the soul's made of if, if that makes sense <laughs> so. and sometimes like we've had instances like if you're living in a city I've noticed New York, they seem to have like very good tread in, in the uh, in the metro, like coming in out through Connecticut and stuff like that to into Grand Central. Um, most of the subway underneath all the stairs and stuff, a bunch of tread. For whatever reason, like, so we would go to uh, Tokyo when I was trying to go to Tokyo like once a year. And my friend, he'd wear, you know, he, I remember this specifically because we joke about it all the time. He had these leather sole, our, our shoes on. And the metro there is just kind of smooth. And it, it was just, I mean, he could hardly stand up inside. And we were laughing so hard because it was raining. I mean, it was a, we got caught in a downpour, you know, just finished dinner, whatever. And like you were running into the subway and everything, a lot of people, I mean, he could hardly stand up in the subway. <clears throat> now that's like the only time I've ever seen that. And he was just like, you know, what is wrong with your shoes? I'm like, no, I mean, I think this would happen to most people then they're just you know but so it definitely can happen and i had that happen in hong kong i i came in and i was going to a store and directly maybe from maybe from like a metro or something and depending on the cities and the way they build them if it if there's like a lot of tile and stuff and your soles are i mean they'll be soaked soaked through right it can be pretty slippery you know to the point where you like you're walking pretty cautious but you know, at the same time, some of that tile and everything, when it's wet like that, if you have a rubber sole on, it's very similar. Uh, you know, some of those hard density rubber soles, yeah, you gotta be careful. That's, that's definitely true. And that's where being, you know, knowing how to ice skate comes into play because yeah, <laughs> you might find yourself ice skating. <laughs> right. right. I mean, sometimes it's, yeah, if you're, if you're stepping on ice or something in the winter, it doesn't really matter what kind of shoe you have on. Yeah. You gotta be careful there. Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the biggest the funniest things about those lug, those thick lug commando soles is you step on ice and those, guess what? You're slipping just as bad as yeah, any other sole yeah. you got. Yeah, yeah, there's, there is no, <laughs> there's no saving you. So, <laughs> All right, well, next up, here's, here's my next one that I'm really very, very excited about is the, uh, the uh, Ottawa boots in Navy suede. So, midnight suede. And, uh, yeah, just again, I mean, you guys really nail it with the packaging. I love it. Like, it's it's something that I would have never really considered until I started getting your your shoes and boots. Like, you guys really nail it. Like, you you give the thank you card, you give the the email, you know, and this is actually signed by a real person. You know, I could I could tell Joshua Long what? Uh, Lang, yeah. So Lang. yeah, Josh is just next door right here. But I mean, that's okay. those key cards we when we first started, I was still in China. So I would, I would literally just sign them while we were shipping the shoes out and like put one in the box. But now, um, we just get the thank you cards here. You know, we, we get them, have a stack. And then usually it's also kind of an insurance for us because it shows that someone inspected the shoe when we shipped it. So, and then also we can, you know, we can start to do the pointing of the fingers when a guy gets a shoe and it has loose grain. It's like, well, who sent, you know, we don't tell the customer, but when we get it back, it's like, Oh, I guess Wyatt shipped that one. So, right. um, you know, we kind of do that. I kind of joke around about it, but you know, just kind of each one inspect it, sign your name, throw the card in there. And so it's kind of also a little, you know, assurance that we inspected the shoe. And so if something did happen, it's like, was there a thank you card in there? You know? Um, and if there wasn't, then it's kind of a, you know, pretty obvious. No one actually inspected it, which I don't yeah. think that really happens, but it's more like who, who inspected it. Yeah. Right. Who, who looked at that thing before you sent it out? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I really like probably the best unboxing experience I've ever had was when I unboxed these. Like I was just like I I was enamored. Like first off, the smell of the shell emanating out of the box, like that in and of itself is just such a profound experience. I don't think people talk about it enough, but when you smell that leather, it's like it's doing something to you. You know, like it. You're, yeah. I know. Well, if I have four or five pair, like in sitting here with this small room and stuff, I mean, the whole room will smell like shower cord. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it's, it's a good smell for sure. It's amazing. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing at four ween, but they're doing something right. Cause in fact, I don't know if you saw my recent video that I just uploaded. It, 
I did a custom leather jacket through Arrow Leathers, through Thurston Brothers Arrow. Um, right. right. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a natural chrome excel front quarter horse and uh, it's front quarter horse hide natural chrome excel, which I didn't even know Horween made, by the way. I thought it was, I thought all chrome excel was cow. Not the case. And uh, I was stoked when this thing got in and my God, like my whole closet smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet. Is it, now, did you get that through, is it uh, Epilot? Um, no, no, I didn't go through Epilot. I went through uh, Thurston Brothers. I don't know. I don't okay, know. so that is the brand, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm actually kind of confused on that. So Thurston Brothers is who I coordinated the order through, but they sent me the arrow leather. So, yeah, yeah, I'm not... I, I'm not sure either, but yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure which, which brand, but I've seen those recently and they're, yeah, they look amazing. Yeah. They're very, very nice. Very nice. It was, it was expensive. It was a little pricey, but um, I mean, just if, if you love the smell of a boot when it gets in, that's made out of shell or chrome cell, imagine a ja a whole jacket made out. <laughs> like it's I know. I know. I've never been into like really like leather jackets, but I just got an email from Epilot recently and they're doing maybe like a, maybe not a pre-order, but like you can like pre-buy it or something. And, okay. uh, and it is, it, I think it is in natural horse fronts and it just looks Man. amazing, you know, and it is, it's one of the perfecto jackets. I don't know if it's shot or who it is, but it might even be the Thurston company. I, I'm not sure, but yeah, it looks pretty it, awesome. Yeah. I, I would imagine it's probably shot. Um, cause I've seen, um, context clothing. They did a, a run of natural chrome Excel through shot as well. And years ago, and I should have, I still kick myself for not jumping on it, jumping on it when I had the chance, but that was just an outstanding jacket. So yeah, I, I would say like treat yourself to something like that because I know yeah. I, you would love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One of these days I will have to grab one of those. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. So uh, I kind of wanted to pick your brain about the, uh, the shoehorn who came up with this brilliant idea. Cause this is just the best thing. This, this is the best little cherry on top of the boots. Like, get this this beer bottle opener sh slash shoehorn like to combine both is probably the coolest idea i've ever seen before <laughs> yeah well you know i i came up with it but it's definitely not original because like so our factory owner uh andy he's like he's like obsessed with the japanese culture and the way they present things whether it's you're, you're buying a gift or whether you're buying you know you, you you bought an item and you get it in the packaging the boxing the whole presentation it's it's always kind of unparalleled the way they do it um and so you know we were sitting there talking one time and and because i was living with him at the time i mean i i lived with him for most of the years over there in china he just let me stay in his apartment with him and um yeah and he he's like he would always buy these little gadgets and stuff from japan always you know okay. and he had of course the small little bottle openers and, and things like that um i had seen something just like that before um and so i it didn't it was it was a, a, like a little shoehorn bottle opener it was just a little bit different of a design and so i just found a, a company um near us in china and then just kind of sent them over some design or whatever and they're like yeah no problem and so <clears throat> yeah they made it up very quickly um sent over a sample, which wasn't great because like the finish and stuff, but they're like, well, this is just the sample material. Um, we'll send you like, you know, 20 after this, if you confirm it. And it was pretty cool. The, the bottle opener part of it, we always kind of joke around because it's like, it's not that easy to open if you're not used to it. You have to turn the logo in to, oh. to really, you know, and so like the the outside, the, the bendy part, yeah, that should be facing out. Okay. You know? Right. exactly so like the bend should be like cupping the actual bottle and then it, it works pretty well because i've seen people so like oh this is cool and then they try to open the bottle like yeah maybe it's not so cool I'm like well <laughs> turn, turn it the other way but yeah it's supposed to be something fun because of course yeah it could work as a shoehorn but it's it's kind of you know more of a you know fun design and it but it definitely i i, I have one sitting right here i open drinks with all the time but oh um, cool, cool. Definitely yeah. not your kitchen aid big uh bottle openers that's for oh. sure Right, right, true, but still, I mean, the little hole here means that you can put it on your keychain yep. and keep it around with you. So, so if you're in a pinch, you need to need to open a bottle of beer. Boom, you got something ready, you know. 
and I've opened beer bottles with it before and it works, it works great. It works just as good as anything, anything else that I carry around. So well, well I, I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I love this thing. I love these. I mean, I probably have 10 of them, 10 or 12, like they're all over the place in my house. But, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Every station. yeah. Yeah. And I love, I love the, the Grant Stone logo on there. Just, you know, very, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. And uh, so, so yeah, and this is also really cool that you guys included this little card giving a description of the Rapello suede. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got one of these. I don't I don't know if you're familiar with Alfred Sargent shoes. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, yeah. J. Crew years ago, I want to say 2013, 2014, they did some runs of Alfred Sargent double monk straps in Rapello suede. And I remember they, they included the same card. So it's it's so cool to get to see it again because I love the suede, I love Rapello. It's, it's just one hell of a suede. And, uh, and yeah, th that's, it's, it's very, th that's another thing I wanted to ask you about actually, Rapello. So when I think Rapello, I'm thinking it's like repelling water. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, cause that suede, I don't even need to spray it down. I could just wear them as is. And it's like the water just feeds off of it anyways you know what i mean so i don't need to spray it down with nano protector suede protector or anything like that is that do you know is that why they call it that or i don't i don't know that um okay. i do know that they you know if you ask the tanner you just, because of course we feel the questions about you know should i be putting product on it um yeah. i'm not sure if that's why they use it in the name but they do use like a water they call it a waterproofing like agent when they're tanning it to help um you know repel water but okay. we always kind of stay away from the word like waterproof just because nothing none of these are waterproof unless that you know it has like a membrane construction or something like a golf shoe but right. yeah it, it it does really really well keeping like moisture and and dust and things like that off of it or if it does get dirty it's pretty easy to brush out because yeah of course many many people they'll they'll say hey suede is pretty delicate right and, and it's it gets dirty easily and everything else and it's it's a tough one to answer because everyone treats their footwear completely different and so it's kind of like honestly wear it like you do your other footwear yeah and go from there i've never heard anyone come back and say oh i destroyed them because i wore them like my chrome excel it's like right i mean if you spill a bottle of red wine on it maybe on our white suede yeah you're gonna have an issue right if you wear them normally wear them in what you know in the rain and you let them dry and things like that and brush them yeah really i mean yeah they start to age just like your full grain does um but yeah it, it's a really good article that way with i i remember in the past um i don't even know if it was cf stead but we were using different suede's um you know not for grant stone but there was always an option to put the, the 3m like waterproofing protectant sprint you know spray finish on it whatever um okay. you have that option to do that and it was always kind of the same answer as like putting you know uh, an alternative bottom on a leather sole or putting something on the top of it it's it's kind of like suede is still leather and most of the better grade suede because you can buy suede for a dollar a foot a square foot and things like that but you're not going to find those on Goodyear well footwear that are, you know, $400 to $800. Just, it's not going to happen. So nice. most of the suede being used, like from the likes of the CF stead, I mean, they're, I mean, they, they can handle a lot of wear and, and abuse and things like that. And so it's just like a normal leather. It, it ages really well. Um, of course, you know, if, if you have like, you go into a mud puddle and let it soak and sit for a day, I mean, it would be a problem just like most of your other leather, you know, kind of thing. But um, and if you want to treat them a little bit a little more cautious, I mean, raining, no big deal, but don't get them completely, you know, muddy or something and stuff like that, obviously. Um, yeah. yeah, they, they age well, you know, they age really well. I mean, I, I had, um, I have my, my pair that I'm wearing this year a lot because I, I tend to wear loafers more than anything. Um, I have one of those espresso suede, uh, traveler loafers and um, I wear it, you know, mowing the lawn and, and out with the kid and you know our, our one-year-old in the backyard getting wet obviously you know she's in and out of a pool and this and that and yeah I mean there's no problem with it you know I took a photo for a customer uh, 
a few days ago and I've been wearing that for eight months, but like not just to work, but like everywhere, you know, yeah. to a winery, to a brewery, like to whatever, you know, um, outside, not indoors, you know, in grass, in, in dust, whatever. And I mean, you brush them and they look fine, you know, right. but it's a pretty, yeah, the, the suede's are, are, are pretty resilient, you know, from what I've seen. Of course, there's, there's a lot of different articles, but I think anything you buy, you know, from an Alfred Sargent or from an Alden or, or from us or whatever, um, Alan Edmonds, I, they're pretty good articles, you know. I completely agree. And you know what, it's, it's so funny, like, like suede, it's got such a bad rap. Like people really, they, they think it's so delicate. And uh, there's one story that I told years ago that yeah. I actually, there was a tree that, that I was trying to prevent from falling on my house and uh, it was raining and it was my neighbor's tree. And uh, I was out there trying to help him, trying to chain this tree together because it was actually split down the center. And part of it, it was going to fall. It was going to fall close to our house. It wasn't going to hit the house. But still, it was kind of scary because it's a big tree. And I'm, I'm wearing my Alden Snuff Suede Roy boots. Um, and uh, oh, my God, like I was getting, they were, they were just coated in mud. They were caked in mud, in fact. And I was, I was climbing up on the fence. And I fell off the fence. And I'm like trying to get this, this rope and this chain around this tree. And I came in and I'm like, oh crap, you know, this is like a light suede, you know, boot. Right. And I just took them to the sink. I rinsed them off. I set them, set them out. And the next day you couldn't even tell like anything happened to them. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's just, a, it's just a leather, you know, and yeah. it, without, without a full grain intact, you know, and, and so right. they do, they clean up pretty nicely. Yes. Um, I know our ivory suede in the past, um, we don't, I don't think we offer any more. All of them are discontinued. Um, we just kind of did, we ran them for probably a year or two. Um, and uh, those could be tough for a presentation. Once you wear them though, I mean, they, they wear in really, really well. But for us to keep them, for the factory to keep them clean and for us to keep them clean so when they open it, I mean, because I'm saying like, even like the smallest little nick towards the heel from being inside the box, rubbing against, because inside the box is brown or something that those white those white suede can be tough yeah you know, to to actually make and 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 give you know do it well those are tough um right. but once you have them and you wear it and 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 the customer's okay with getting them dirty they just don't want anything on them you know of course when they open the box so yeah they look great you know because my dad he always likes the like the plain white buck you know he, he really likes that shoe and yeah. we've talked about doing it before um and really the only reason we haven't done it is because I'm like, it's, I'm just terrified of, of, you know, shipping over 200 of them and, or, you know, 80 of them and yeah. having, you know, five pair with, I mean, little, little tiny marks, but yeah, I, I can understand if someone opens, it's like, well, I don't want that. Right. You know? right. You're like, I guess yeah, you, you have to be very, very careful with those light suede. Yeah. You're, you're right about that. And I have a pair of, of your guys' ivory suede, uh, blue bluchers bluchers yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. um and they're fantastic they're, they're the perfect hot weather derby like like you know obviously the lighter the color of the boot the less heat it retains you know especially when you're out in the sun it's it's just such a cool it's just such a cool um light leather to wear especially when you're getting baked in the sun like i just throw on some lightweight stretch chinos some real thin socks and i throw on those ivory suede's and by the way, I get so many compliments on those. It's such a beautiful shoe with the uh, with the ivory suede upper and then that nice antique leather sole. Oh my god, yeah. I, I get I get compliments on those from people that don't pay attention to footwear. Like they they see those and they're like, oh my god, I love those. What are they? Yeah, the light color suede. They are. They're really sharp. Uh, the the penny loafer and ivory suede. That was one of our favorites. Josh and I were just talking about it because we were discontinuing. He's like. I think I'm going to grab one of those. I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. He's like, I, I want to buy one of those like right now. I'm like, yeah, yeah absolutely. Because before we got rid of them because yeah, it was, it was a really, it was a really cool makeup. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, I was looking at your site just yesterday and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm going to jump on those ivory suede Ottawa boots. Those are beautiful. Um, I love the, uh, I've long had a, had a love for, the uh what, what is, what's alden call it the indie boot in uh because alden does an indie boot they call it milkshake suede i think they call it <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that might be the color that cf said calls it okay milkshake okay so, yeah. 
I think yeah. some milk chocolate. I think it's the same color though. I, I'm pretty sure. I think it's the I think it's the same thing. I'm not sure. Ivory and milkshake. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, milkshake might be a little bit more tan, where ours is like a grayish white. The ivory is, um, mm -hmm. and the milkshake because we've had those before, um, and though it, it's a little bit more. I mean, it's a really nice color. It has a little more of like a a tannish, like a beige color to it. For ours is more of like that grayish white. Oh, okay. Um, okay. but yeah, I mean, splitting hairs because they will. They'll have you know, the swatch side by side or something, you know, they're very, very similar. They're very, they're very close. Yeah. It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. And, uh, man, so yeah, I'm, I'm this, I'm this close to pulling the trigger on those. So <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, like, I, I really love your guys's, these are flannel, right? Flannel boot bags that you guys include. Yeah. I want to say the bags are, the bags should be a flannel. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yes. Brilliant. I, my God, what, what, I can't tell you what a godsend it is to have these because it's not like, it's not that I just travel, use them when I travel. I also throw them on my bed when I need to like, when I need to like condition my boots, I, I lay them down as like a mat to protect my bed from, uh, right. you know, getting the debris from the boot onto the bed. So I, I use these all the time. These are just fantastic. Yeah. Especially when traveling, you know, I throw, I throw my boots in those and it's just like you're traveling in luxury right there. <laughs> Yeah, and we, we just changed the inside the box, the color of the bags, and then the divider before we were using like a tissue paper to pack it, um, where right. now we have that cloth in there. And yeah. it's just, you know, ne not necessarily, I mean, you could use it to polish it. You could use it more or less kind of what we were just saying, kind of like a placemat, because yeah, it's the paper, the tissue paper, it, it might look nice here when we're packing it, but a lot of times, by the time it gets to the customer, Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it doesn't look very nice. And then, you know, if they return it, yeah, the, the stuff is destroyed. It gets you know? crinkled. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I did love the, the tissue paper that was, a, and it had your logo on it. It was, it was a very nice, I thought it was very nice, but this is, this is much better. Yeah. This cloth, this, this cotton cloth thing. Yeah. I, I cause I love having, and this is just such a nice touch, but I love having a rag to like, yeah, you know, apply polish or, just to wipe down the boots or something like that. And this is just a perfect material for that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, very, very nice touch there. And I love, uh, again, like you're talking about the presentation, the way that it's sort of, this is folded, like the boots are sort of folded into the, into this fabric when, when they're shipped. That's, that just adds to the, adds to the awesome experience of unboxing your boots. So, I mean, yeah, uh, thank, I mean, in the, the Goodyear welt, the, the boots and shoes and we see how other brands do it and everything. And it's, it's probably a battle for everybody just because they're heavy. They're really heavy and your boxes, I mean, we're, tr we're constantly trying to make our box better because they're so easy, especially if you get a return or something. I mean, it's so easy to break the box because these are six, seven pound boxes. Right. You know? right. So if they're moving around in there a little bit, and so we're trying to constantly get it a little bit tighter, a little bit stronger. And because like I said, sometimes you're, you're shipping and it looks okay, but you know, if yes. it's going to California or like one day going to Thailand, you're like, I wonder what it looks like when they open it, you know, <laughs> because the UPS driver and, and, and whatever, I mean, they're just, you know, you have to move the box, you know, and they're, and they're stacking them and this and that. So yeah, it, it's the present, the, the boxing and the, the packaging for the Goodyear Welt footwear, it does take some stronger material. I mean, most of the boxes that are available for shoes and stuff, I mean, you, you just couldn't do it, you know? Right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's true. And like I said, the unboxing, you guys really nail it. I mean, you can tell there's just so much attention and love put into it. And every, like, every time I unbox a pair of grandstones, it's such a joy. That's why, that's why I film it. I take them outside in my front yard and I sit it out on the tree stump and, you know, I, I film it in 4K. I wish I had a better tripod to s sort of show what's inside the box, but due to the angulature, I'm not able to really capture it is in as good of detail as I'd like to, but yeah, I, I really try to show off just what a joy unboxing your boots are because it's, it's unparalleled. I mean, and like, I said, yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I definitely appreciate it. I know some people don't care, but it's like, if, if you care about boots of this level of quality, then you got to care about the unboxing process too, you know? <laughs> so, right. And uh, yeah. Exactly. And that, that was one of those things I think when we first started, um, I remember, you know, we were sitting there talking about it quite a bit and, and Andy, he was just saying like, that was one thing he always kind of stressed. It's like, 
you know, that's gotta be right. And, you know, you have the presentation is, is that's everything, especially at a product that's not like a disposable, you know, $40, $30 item or something, you know, that's, that's super important, you know? And so, yeah, we, we tried to, you know, always kind of focus on it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it's, I think it's smart because a uh, presentation counts for a lot, you know, and, and especially I've been into these Japanese concepts recently because I mean, there's some of them are so brilliant. Like the, uh, the Japanese concept, I've talked about this in some of my videos called Wabi Sabi, um, which is basically, and, and Shibui is also a similar concept. It basically means, you know, and by the way, Matt on Instagram, Shiboi, Shibui, you recognize that account? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he just, he actually just got a pair of your Edwards too. Um, but yeah, th these Japanese concepts, it's basically, I mean, I'm probably not doing it them justice, but it basically has to do with loving everything that you carry with you, loving everything, putting love and care and attention and intent behind everything that you surround yourself with. Not just that you carry with you, but, you know, making sure that everything around you is sort of aesthetically pleasing. And if it's old, make sure that it's aging right, you know, aging properly. And there's just an intrinsic beauty to things. And I think, uh, and, and I think paying attention to the aesthetics carefully sort of lends itself to a better overall consumer experience. And I think, uh, yeah, the unboxing experience is just like that. It's like you guys put love and attention and care into literally everything that goes into the box. So yeah, I, I, I know a lot of people kind of refer to that and it's something along the lines of that every, every item, everything, every physical thing has a spirit, you know, yeah. and, to treat it, and to treat it like that. And it's like, yeah, that's, you know, having that type of detail and everything, it, it's, it's a sure way to, to get it right. And the yeah. problem, you know, and I guess how to keep that going daily, you know, and to keep sure that that is, the, and there's just no other way to look at it. And that's just the way to look at it. And every pair has to be right. And then that's about it. You know, that's true. It, it, when you put love and care and attention into, the, into everything, you imbue it with a soul. And, and it sounds, you know, I don't want to sound too crazy here, but it translates well. When I'm opening it, I, I feel the soul of everything that you put. I feel the full soul and the full attention that you put into the details of every aspect of it. Like it, it's, it translates directly to the consumer. So I definitely love that. It's, it's not, it's not like opening up a pair of sneakers, you know, a pair of Nikes. It's like, Oh, open this thing. All right. These things were literally, literally printed, not even made, but printed in a factory. And it's like, what an underwhelming experience. But then, you know, these, these boots and shoes, man, unparalleled. Yeah. Right there. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, these midnight suede. Now, years ago in my in my uh, boot collecting career, I wouldn't have gotten these because I have Alden some Alden tanker boots and Navy Chrome XL. And so, since I have a a Navy boot in this pattern in this in this uh, design, I wouldn't have jumped on these. But now that I'm in the advanced stages of my boot collecting addic addiction, um, now it's like a no brainer. Like, yeah, I have those. Alden tanker boots in Navy Chrome XL, but these are suede. So it's completely different. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when I saw these, like there's something, I was talking to some of my friends last night about this. Um, like there is something that I can't even put into words, the beauty of Navy up against that antique sole. Just, it's so striking. It's so much more striking in my opinion than, you know, like any other color up against that antique soul. The Navy, for some reason, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just such a stunning contrast and they really marry up well together, you know, like yeah. a tonic, you know? <laughs> yeah. From a personal preference standpoint, I've, I've always kind of preferred the natural well with a natural stain and, and part, partly because, and it's not a great reason, but when you put a, an antique welt on and an antique stain, it's, it has to be kind of right. I mean, because if, if it has like a red base, it really depends what kind of upper it is because it may not translate well at all. Uh, oh. if, it's like a, if it's like a brownish, but with like a red base to it or like a lot of like red hue, where sometimes it has more of like a yellow, a yellowish brown stain. And then it's a completely different, you know, look. But I mean, both are just antique or antique brown, but they're very, very different. Um, right. We just, we just did a pre-order today or yesterday on the load and suede and we did two new welts which are 
which is like a dark chocolate. And those to me, they're, it, it looks really sharp, but also it's very, very consistent. And we, you know, we just make sure there's no red in there because sometimes there's a little red with that upper. It, it looks like a Christmas tree type of deal, you know? Uh -huh. And so you're like, yeah, you don't, you don't want it to be, you can't go the wrong way with the antique color and have it kind of be a little bit too red, which sometimes we do that. And I'm like, okay, we need to, because, you know, we have a, a lady, she's sitting there literally mixing the stain. Um, and so we have a few different stains and she'll, she'll mix it and then we'll try it. And then, you know, she'll actually stick to that. But I mean, they're all hand mixed and there's no exact science to our stains at least. Oh, interesting. Try to get plants within range and try to stick to that. And, you know, if we develop a new one, you know, we try to keep a little bit around, which it also changes color if it sits for more than like four or five months. So, um, okay. yeah, the, the natural stain is for sure. It, it, it's, it's a nice little frame border because it's always that nice light, almost like a natural wood color. Um, right, right. Okay. Yeah, actually, I noticed that with this pair right here, these are the black Ottawa boots in, yeah, black Chrome XL Ottawa boots. And I noticed when these came in, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I, I wanted to, that was something I, I forgot to ask you about. So I'm glad you brought it up. But the, the, the sole on these is so different from the other soles because I, I think I called it in the video, this was years ago, I, I said it was more of a cherry finish. I don't know right. if you can see that. And when you compare that with the other one, it's like, here we go. Right. Yeah, totally different. I mean, they're both technically, like you said, they're both antique, but, but the, the black one, it's, it's more of, a, it's got more of a red finish and like sort of a, just a darker red finish. Whereas, whereas this one, it's more of a natural and, uh, yeah. And, and actually, so the, like the black boot there, so that actually has, it's like, we call it like a mahogany stain. So that has an antique mahogany stain that we actually put on it. The one with the natural welts on the other side, that actually doesn't have a stain at all. It just has a natural sealer and we, we buff it on a wheel and that's it. So there is no stain that welt comes natural like that directly from Barber. Um, and, and we don't apply anything to it. If we do, um, it might be from the upper. We'll put like just a neutral shoe cream, which it won't really change the color. It might just make it a little more rich, but um, so that doesn't even have a stain to it whatsoever. That's actually just a natural leather color. Wow. That's all you said. That, you said the sole comes from Barber. Is that uh, just the welt itself? Oh. Uh, there's a company in Massachusetts called Barber. I think they've been doing it for, a very, very long time. Um, they, they make every type of welt you can um, imagine. And, and, uh, and it, okay. yeah. And so that, that welt there is just natural. And then we just put like a sealant on it and, but there's no stain on it actually. Okay. I got you. I got you. Wow. Very nice work. Very nice work. Yeah. When you said Barber, I thought, I thought I was, my mind went to the, the UK. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. The coat maker. Yeah. I was like, Oh, Barber makes this. <laughs> right. But that, that's that's very good to know. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because because yeah, that's definitely something I noticed because I got I got these in at the same time as I got the crimson chrome XL diesel boots and the black chrome XL diesel boots. They all arrived at the same time, and I'm like looking at them, and these had a clearly just uh, yeah, like you said, a mahogany finish. And I thought, wow, that's that's just brilliant. You know, putting because because yeah, like like you're saying. And I noticed this with laces too. It's very precarious. It's a very precarious, like you can't, there's no, there's no guidebook for how to do this. It's like, you can just tell based off the aesthetics. Like, like for example, when I'm going to throw laces on, like I ordered a bunch of different rawhide laces and um, I was talking to my friends about this recently. Yeah. I, I ordered some red rawhide laces and it's so hard to get them to pull off with any boot because it's just such a bright red and inexplicably olive the, the color that I did not expect would go well with any boot, except for certain ones, looks fantastic on almost every single pair of boots that I have. Like the olive laces work so well with, with the black. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, so I've ordered so many, uh, so many different rawhide laces and, and you get them in and you think that a certain, you think tan's going to work well with brown or you think the, you know, the brown's going to work well with a navy. And it's like, you don't know until you put them on that, holy crap, it is hard to get these laces to really work well. <laughs> so, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it's true. And so similar to matching up the color of the of the soul with the upper, it's like you get you got to play around with it. You know what I mean? That's, right. I, yeah, I think that's what you're getting with. So I, I did want to ask you about your laces, your rawhide laces. These things are fantastic. I love these. Yeah. Things. yeah so do, do you, does the factory produce these or, or how, what's the process for those? No, we get those from um, a tannery, a lace maker in Kentucky. No kidding, really? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I mean, they, they actually ship those to China and then, you know, oh, we, we have inventory there yeah. and they come back here. Uh, it actually works out to do it that way, but um, yeah. yeah, I think we've been buying laces from a long time. I mean, they it, it's a really good lace. The thing with the leather laces is and are durable, but they have a different, maybe a different type of strength because we've had customers who literally put their boots on for the first time and snap one. And it's like, well, what happened, you know, kind of thing. But I mean, it is, it is real leather. And so sometimes the fibers can be a little bit loose in some area and, and it can snap, but at the same time, you, you have a pair that you've worn for four years. And it's the same lace, which would be pretty rare with cotton. So it, it's, yeah, it's a little bit of a, of a, of a mix there. So we try to just do both. We'll just give the customer both uh, in, you know, and the boots that can actually accept the bigger leather lace, we'll put a cotton one in there as well, because yeah, it's, it's, it, it's just really per personal preference. And then also the leather one can kind of shed leather fiber, you yeah. know, every day using it, it trying to drives me nuts, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. At first, they do shed a little bit, but uh, yeah. I find ultimately, I just I love the leather laces so much more than the cotton. Yeah. Not, not to not, not to knock the cotton, and I think the cotton looks really good in something like the Edward boot. Um, you know, the more dressy you get, but or you know, like these these derbies here, um, the cotton looks good. I wouldn't want rawhide on that, but uh, when I'm wearing a boot. For me, rawhide is my preference. I love it. So that's really cool. I didn't realize that your laces were from Kentucky. That's awesome. <laughs> I just, I just assumed they were they they came from the like that the factory made them or something. So yeah, yeah. we I mean, our factory right now. Um, I guess the last few years has gone through a little transition. And so right now, I mean, we probably only have at like peak like fifteen people working on on Grant Stone, and so. Okay. You know, it might be like two people doing the, the uppers. Um, you have like one person who's cutting, another person who's who's mapping out the patterns, nesting them on the leather. Um, we have one person doing the the, the um, inseam stitch for the welt, one person for the sole stitch. Okay. Um, and then you have two or three people in between uh, the machine lasting, side lasting, and um, the bottoming, attaching the bottoming sanding near all the wheels you know sanding the, the edge of this the boot and everything okay and then you have a couple people towards the end who are you know making sure the brass tacks are in kind of going over the boot lacing heel pods things like that kind of finishing up and packaging so yeah i mean we're and that's all we do is is just the the making of the boot so like all the leathers and stuff yeah that all comes from tanneries and components and things um oh. everything comes from outside um yeah, yeah. So, and really there are a ton of companies that make those rawhide laces elsewhere. It's just yeah. that the company in Kentucky, um, they've been really good and, and make a good product. So we just don't really mess with it. Right. Right. Definitely. Yeah. No, don't fix it if it ain't broke, you know? <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially the laces cause they're tough and you know, they're, yeah. yeah, they're very tough. In fact, you know, I ordered, I order uh, rawhide laces from guarded goods a lot. And, uh, they say that th these laces here, they have like a, tensillary strength of like they could hold 75 pounds I think if I'm remembering correctly um so they are very tough I've never I've never had any of them split on me but um I do have it yeah where where I'm breaking them in and yeah some of the fibers shed but that's yeah. okay you know like let's brush it off you know <laughs> yeah it is you're right it's mainly when it's new and, and they haven't really been run through the eyelets much yeah Right, exactly, exactly. But for me, like, there's, there's nothing like a rawhide. Like, some people don't like them, but I'm, I'm, all, I'm like a fanatic of rawhide laces. So, yeah. And and one thing, one thing that I wanted to ask you about were these derbies. These are a natural tan veg. Yep. Um, and on the description on the website, so Jake, it, um, almost vintage style. He, uh, he talks about how he loves battle leather, and I didn't even know what battle leather was. 
And it wasn't until I've had these, I had these for like probably a few months and I went back and I read the description and th these are made out of Battalassie as well. And so I was, I was pleasantly surprised by that. Um, Cause Jake talks about how these have so much more depth and character than like a Chrome XL do. He, he, you know, he, he kind of, he made a video where he talked about how he likes Chrome XL, but he, he prefers the Battalassie because it, it, it's a net, it's a veg tan leather that apparently breaks in really well and has just its own unique character. And uh, so I was really delighted when I learned that the, this pair in particular had this, it's, it's called Battalassi Carlo, right? Is that the? Yeah, I think it's Carlo Battalassi and, and the tan. Battalassi itself, Italy. And, and from what I understand, I mean, if, kind of always focused on pit tanned vegetable tan articles. Um, and so it's, yeah, I mean, they're, they're very good. I mean, but it is a very different leather, like comparing yeah. it to Chrome XL or something is very difficult because um, Chrome XL, of course, is Chrome tanned, but it's a soft elastic leather that has, is very transparent and yeah. it has a lot of oil and wax inside that moves around as, you know, it flexes and things and it, you can see the base of the color and it's very, very different. Um, and the surface is snuffed very, very tight. So it has very smooth surface. The grain is very, very uh, flat. Where yeah. the battle assay, the veg tan, I mean, we had another color, the castaño color. We had that for a while, but yeah. you know, we had a, an issue because the leather itself is great, but people were kind of expecting and wanting Chrome Excel properties. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know what Chrome Excel was. They don't know what Battle Assey or Veg Tan is, but the, the Battle Assey leather, I mean, anything that's Veg Tan, like Pit Tan, real thick articles, they patina very, very quickly. They scuff quickly. Um, if you put neutral shoe cream on that vamp, like right now, and you put quite a bit on it and you don't really move it too quickly. I mean, you'll literally stain the leather. Um, that's not going to happen with the Havana Brown from Excel or anything like that. It won't happen. Um, because the leather, I mean, it, it basically keeps the, you know, all the wax and everything on the Chrome Excel will keep that stuff on the surface. It won't penetrate as quick. That shoe cream will go directly into that leather almost immediately, you know? Um, right. So it, it changes the leather, all the elements and stuff affect the leather much quicker than the likes of a Chrome Excel, which is kind of on its own as well. But yeah, I mean, you're right. Um, and I, I don't want to mess up the name here. I think it's title town goods. So this was a, a person on, on, on who I talked to on Instagram and he has a pair of our saddle tan, um, bluchers. and okay. he makes these small goods and he's like, Hey, I have this saddle tan leather. I'm making you, one of these things. And I'm like, no way. You know, I'm like, well, let me, you know, pay for the shipping, you know, something It's a field note cover and it works really, really well for the saddle tan stuff for this type of thing, because you can see even like the pull up right there from just putting a pen in there. Um, it's just this leather over time changes so much. And so it's really, really good. I just got this though from him. I think his title town is, is his brand name. Um, title town. <laughs> And yeah, and so a lot of people, so when, when we were in Japan, you know, if you get these, um, these, these leather good makers, this is Minerva box. So this is the same leather um, that, that we use. We use Minerva, but this is Minerva box. So it has a little bit more of a grain to it. Oh. And I mean, it's absolutely, you know, ridiculous. Yeah, um, ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And so it, it ages in a way that, you know, it doesn't, it's just different. And also, I mean, the smell, the smell of, of any of these veg tan lovers is just, is in my opinion, is as much, is really nice. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, tote bags, bags like this, these little sleeves and stuff. I mean, it, it, and you can't really see too well, but it's, it's, uh, it's amazing character. Wow. Um, yes. Yeah, so, yeah it, it's really, really nice leather that, I mean, I'd love to put on to boots and everything else, but it can be disappointing for someone when they're expecting a soft Chrome Excel with pull up and yeah. all that stuff. It's very, very different. And, right. and so we've ha we had a lot of people say, Hey, this is, feels a little stiffer and everything else. And it's like, this leather will take time. 
right you know, it's time to show itself and that was the the same leather that i was just talking about with my dad's boot that he was wearing a lot and put that ripple sole on and we had people you know dming in and then sending messages saying hey how do i buy this boot i'm like right it's our tan diesel boot and they're just like looks very different i'm like yeah well you know it's just yeah. three years later and it, and it really you know yours probably won't look like that if you wear it in normal conditions but it, right. it's, it's really really unique article yeah you're right you're right and actually that's a good point that you brought up about like how the staining because i've worn these in the ring a couple of times the battle assies and uh yeah it's there, there's just there's some some water spots or some sort of shifting around of the tannins within the leather i don't know if it i don't know if that's coming through on the camera yeah, yeah just a little bit and you know me being into leathers and the character of the leather and things like that's not a complaint for me at all um it's just something that i that i notice you know but where is chrome excel my god you'll never see anything like that on chrome excel <laughs> so. yeah yeah it's they they age differently because chrome excel of course that ages nicely as well especially the natural and, and the browns and everything but a very very different feel um smell character everything so uh yeah it, it's yeah, it's, it's a good leather, but yeah, for some people, they're expecting something else because their average boot, you know, doesn't use something like that. Right, right. Very true. Very true. Yeah, it's so cool, though. I love I love having all the different leathers and experimenting around with all of them. And, you know, I, uh, I sent a message the other day to uh, the, the Grantstone DM on Instagram because, you know, this is my look. As soon as I get a new pair of boots, and especially when I love them, then it's inevitable something happens. So I was, uh, I was grilling and I got some hamburger, um, a splash of hamburger grease hit the vamp on the, on these natural shell quarter and Edward boots. And it was just right here. And so I wiped it up. I just wiped it off and the, it was actually, it, it permeated like it, it went, you can't see it. Now. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it permeated real quick. It sort of, it wetted, you could tell that it wetted the leather and it absorbed. And I said, you know what? sometimes the best solution is to do nothing. Like doing nothing is a choice sometimes. And sometimes it's the best solution. And that's the amazing thing about this leather is the fibers hold together, but the debris kind of shifts through the leather and it just, you can't even see it now. It's gone, it was gone after, you know, it just, it just went away. That's, and that's, that's one of the things people, I don't think people don't understand about the, um, the anatomy of leather is it, it is fibers and things can go through those fibers and not leave a trace if that makes sense and that's what happened with mine like I thought for sure because there was one time I, I got some butter a, a big chunk of butter fell on my uh, on my Alden plain toe boots in uh, what's it called uh, tan country calf and that butter stain didn't go away for like months <laughs> it was yeah. just there. Yeah. So sometimes you just can't tell what's going to happen. But uh, I got in there with some saddle soap and that took it out. So, but in this case, with the shell, it just went away on its own. Pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. And like the care and, and using some of these products, it really goes a long way for like the average pair though, just because, I mean, we've had multiple times, like especially Chrome Excel, but of course, cutting it is, is difficult because it's a big animal and you get loose grain that people talk about. And so, you know, we have to be careful of that. But I mean, I've had a few times over the years where I, I need a photo sample and, um, or we're going to highlight it and do like a lifestyle photo or something. I mean, I'll take a B grade that has loose grain and it's not a problem. You know, you put shoe trees in it and you polish it and everything else. It's literally a pair that we are too concerned to ship out to a customer because they'd be, even though, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a gray area there because it's not so much of, okay, hey, this is the leather, you just have to accept it. Because at the end of the day, if the customer isn't comfortable or doesn't like it, they're going to send it back. And so, you know, you, you're constantly flirting with that line and there is no SOP for something like that. It's like, what do you think the customer's gonna feel about it? You know, and we can sit there and if there's a little bit, you can explain, hey, this is a, a large animal, North American bovine, you know, animal that it's thick leather, it has a looser grain, it's not, an, you know, a small calf. So it's a different animal. Um, but, you know, I would take some of those shoes that I would not ship out to a customer, or decide not to, you know, polish them, whatever, and take photos, you know, and people are like, wow, that 
that looks great, you know, and it's like, of course, I don't say anything, but we do that all the time, you know, and so it's kind of like it, it yeah. a little bit of like conditioner brushing, it really, especially the Chrome Excel, I mean, they look really, really sharp after doing that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it definitely, it definitely goes a long way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, very good points there. Um, I actually, I actually wanted to ask you um, about uh, your personal rotation. So you might yeah. have seen my, my rotation, like I, I've got Alden Indies, I've got Truman, Truman Boots, some Mark, some Mark Alberts, a lot of Grant Stones, um, you know, a lot of plain toe boots. I just, I have probably 40, 40 pairs of boots. So, but you personally, I see some shoes and boots behind you. So what, what are yeah. you, what's your rotation like and what are you into? shoes and taking photos of and they're not really ones that really wear day to day um but you know for me usually similar to um josh and parker you know working here in the office in a warehouse we just kind of gravitate towards the penny loafers um i'm not exactly sure why that is but i've, I've always kind of liked those and uh before the, we had them at grand stone i mean i always wore i, I really like the brooks penny loafer from alden um the okay. online one um and just i just love that shoe once it's broken i think it looks great it's it's yeah especially if you have it in your house or your apartment or whatever and you have to run out for an hour i mean yeah. if that's sitting by the door you always or me always go for that right you just you know or you're going to go you know long socks pants you know denim whatever and, and go put on boots and stuff to go outside for 15 minutes you just right. end up wearing the loafers a lot so uh, yeah. i, I it's kind of tough for me because I'm usually testing most of doing wear tests for what's it, whatever's coming up. So like right now I'm wearing a boot, uh, a boot called the brass boot. It's something that's coming up this, this fall. Uh, well, it's, it's closer to probably like November ish. So a new last, um, yeah, it's more of like a work boot look, uh, much more so than like our diesel that has that Leo last that has like a tapered toe and everything. This one has high walls, uh, and, and looks very different from, from you know our Leo last, so I, I'm really wearing a lot of that stuff usually. But if I'm not wear testing something, the Sway Travelers um, yeah. and uh, yeah, a Chrome XL Traveler, you know, that's usually what, what I like. As a shoe, I've always liked the Saddle Tan with the leather sole. Uh, I think the exact shoe that you just had. Right. Um, that's probably one of my favorite shoe. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I'm, I'm always wearing the Penny Loafer. I guess you know that's kind of what we. Kind of gravitate, but this is that boot actually. Um, wow. this is that, that brass boot. So this is this is actually one of the samples. So you can see the toe is is, is kind of much higher. Yeah, um, you know, it has a higher toe to it, uh, but a little bit of a different pattern. Uh, it has a mock, so it's just a single mock. It's cropped a little bit tighter than than normal. It's not. It doesn't go all the way. Um, to the toe here doesn't go all the way down right so, yeah i mean it's definitely not you know like a, an indie boot or something that has kind of a, a like a true balance that has kind of a, a lower toe profile and stuff this is a little bit more of like a work boot profile high high walls um a lot of toe room and and even wider toe box and stuff than our leo so oh, wow. yeah yeah and so that's kind of the last is kind of part one of this boot and then part two is going to be just a different outsole. So we're working on um, a lug sole right now. Um, not not really a commando, but you know, an, an actual lug sole that's thicker, something that you know you can wear for a long time and have more tread. You know, something for a more casual work boots. So we're working on that. This one has a, a crepe sole on it, um, but yeah I, yeah. yeah, I don't think we'll be doing this one just yet. Um, I I really like the crepe, and I. I I like the way it looks. It's like super heavy and chunky and all that and, and very comfortable. Um, but I, I think we, you know, we just really want to have a lug, you know, um, yeah. it's, it's more versatile. I mean, you can put the lug on just about anything, you know, so um, sometimes the crepe do. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit different feeling. It's not for everybody. Right. Right. They're squishy. They got the, it's that thick resin, you know, and I got to say, um, what I said earlier about the lug commando sole not performing so well on ice, that's probably the, the crepe sole. That's probably the one sole that does grip the ice to a certain extent that I, you know, so right. in, 
in the deep winter, it's like, that's like a perfect soul because you might be able to walk on ice in them and not slip around. So <laughs> very soft. So a lot, of, a lot of contact. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That is a beautiful model. So is that going to be built on a new last? So that's not the Leo last or? No, this is not the Leo last. So yeah, much, much higher walls. I know it's kind of hard to see with this lighting, but it almost has like that snub nose, um, much, much higher walls there. So it, it doesn't really look like anything that we currently offer. Um, right. Quite a bit different, but it almost looks like that work boot, you know, like motorcycle riding boot, heavier, thicker toe, almost like a last that you put on an engineer boot, something like that. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I think it'll be pretty interesting. I mean, it's, we're, we continue to kind of go in that direction of you know, fuller, higher wall, and then something that's like real, a real work boot, almost saying, of course, it's not like a steel toe or something, but yeah, a, a thicker, you know, a, a heavier duty sole and then higher walls. Right, right. Yeah, that thing is sweet looking. I'm excited. That that. So, would you say probably sizing is the same as the Leo last between the yeah, two? We're, gonna, we're trying to keep everything straightforward as far as that goes. The only difference, I yeah, I would say ninety nine percent of the people would wear the same size. Okay, um, cool. You know, wear the same size as the Leo or the Alexander or any of the other ones. Uh, it's just there is more toe room, I guess, just vertically, just because the the higher walls. Right. Um, but yeah, so it, it will feel like it fits a little bigger, but I don't think necessarily, you know, heel to ball, uh, in step and everything else is actually very, very similar to Leo. Okay, cool. Cool. Wow. That is a fantastic design. I love that. It's like, that's like the classic mock toe look right there. I mean, but with a, with a little bit of the Grant Stone spin on it, you know what I mean? Like it's still, it's, yeah. it's not like the red wing mock toe I'm thinking of. It's not quite to that extent of like chunk, like thick, that, the thick walls that you're talking about. It's still, it's still, you know, a little bit more subdued than that, but I, I really like that. That's a, that's a beautiful design. Yeah. Thanks. And so we're, we're hopefully that, that outsole um, we're working on that now. And so we, I think we have a sample coming in here in just a week or two of that first mock of that outsole. And so, um, yeah, pretty excited for that one. And then we might do a couple wedges on as well which yeah I mean that's that's right in that red wing territory as far as that type of look but like you said it's not quite as aggressive as is something like you know the traditional red wing you know yeah, very, very very tall uh, sidewalls right right that's very true yeah that's I love that you guys keep on you know <clears throat> you guys just keep on innovating and you're not do you're not repeating the same stuff over and over again you're, you're pushing boundaries and you're trying new things that's that's really commendable. Um, I, I just saw your Chelsea's that you guys just released. Oh my God, those are fantastic. I mean, yeah, those, thank you. Yeah. yeah, especially I'm I'm eyeing that that uh that that brown one. That it, it, what's it called again? It's like a brown rough out almost. Oh, yeah, exactly. The Earth Waxy Commander. Earth. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, the, the Chelsea's doing well, and it, it's one of those boots too that traditionally it's you know, for like a buyer, for a brand, they would, they would consider that a fringe boot. You know, it's not something that would be a core collection. It's not something that is, you know, unless you're Arm Williams, it's not yeah. something that, you know, especially in America, it's, that would be considered like a, a, a tier one seller or something or that you'd offer a bunch of wits in. But right. you know, for us, even at the scale we are, because we are, you know, very, very small, I guess, in comparison to, um, I guess, some of the people that, you know, the brands that are in the same category. Um, yeah, the, the Chelsea kind of surprised me a little bit because people were like, they, they were excited about it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're sold out of most of the, the core sizes and stuff right now, which is, it was kind of surprising, you know, as actually one of our best releases so far, which yeah. is, yeah, I, I, I didn't expect that. Um, right. right. You know, I didn't expect that, but it also might die down quite a bit there, but uh, we only have it in one width, but yeah, it's exciting for sure because I like the boot and we have two more colors coming. And so that, oh, that's a good oh. sign. I'm glad it didn't, it wasn't dead, you know? Cool. So nice. yeah, yeah. So we have a, a crimson. Um, I have one here. Oh, perfect. Yeah, we have a crimson. Whoa. Uh, and this, this has natural welts. I know you can't see too well here, but yeah. The, yeah. So that, that has uh, natural welts uh, oh. and that's thing with the crimson upper. And then we have a chocolate calf coming, which will be, We'll have antique darker welds and edge stains, so it looks quite a bit different. Okay, I got you. I got you. Wow, yeah. just beautiful. Oh man, with that <laughs> tab in the back. 
oh man you can't you can't beat that <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so it's yeah i mean it's a it's a it's a pretty basic boot but it's just there's a couple things we want to do with it to make it um i guess that we were looking for you know as far as the fit goes the instep um and chelsea's can can go a few different ways i mean it can be it can look more like the australian work boot it can look more like a yeah. fashion boot with a pointier toe narrow toe box right um, and and lighter materials and things like that and so ours is somewhere in the middle you know and, and for us you know having having a toe that has this type of shape to it um yeah somewhere in the middle it's not quite western and it's not you know saint laurent dress chelsea either so um right, right. yeah we're really excited about it and i i hope it i hope it does well i'm sure it will i'm sure it will i've had I've had a lot of people coming to me in <clears throat> on Instagram asking me my opinion about them. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I mean, those are, that's just one hell of a style. Like I don't wear Chelsea's personally all the time, but I think you guys really nailed it. I mean, cause it's like you said, it's, it's such a fashionable, it's a very fashionable look, you know, and, uh, and especially in the crimson Chrome XL, that's, that's a nice color. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I think it should be a good one there. And it, you know, we'll kind of have like a, a black and a brown calf for more like the dressy look and, and no contrast. Um, and then two different, you know, browns having the crimson and then the dark earth, which is almost like a black and having those two, your casual kind of work styles, you know? Um, but yeah. It, yeah. It, it did surprise me a little bit, you know, because it is, it's usually something that people would tend to think it is kind of following a, a trend, whether it's trendy or not at that time, or, you know, it may not be very consistent overall. Right, right. That's for sure. That's for sure. But, you know, no, I mean, I mean, the Chelsea, that's, that's kind of, in my opinion, it's not quite as timeless of a look as like, you know, the, the Derby, but at the same time, we're, I think we're in an era right now where there is no just one stream of style that you can follow. And um, I think, I think really right now you can wear really anything you want. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and that those Chelseas. I mean, I had a friend ask me recently. So are Chelseas still in style? I'm like Chelseas are always in style. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right? They're they're always going to be around in my in my opinion. And I think you guys really nailed the design there. I mean, it's just it, they're just perfect. I mean, they're not they're sleek and they're they're refined and and um, it really in terms of expressing the leather, it really the leather. I think it, the the look is really accentuated well in that model. It's just a, just a stunning, just a stunning yeah. design. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, it's, it's, they, they can be kind of tough to make sometimes and you you can kind of feel limited to the leather as well, just because they can be kind of difficult to make. So um, yeah, I think we'll start off with these four and see how they do. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So um, I, I did want to ask you and get your take into um, your personal journey with boots and shoes and uh like, like I talked about earlier, how the indie boot, that was like my first step into the boot world. Like some people, for some people, it's the Iron Ranger. For some people, it's just different, you know, the Red Wing Mock Toe or whatever. But for me, it was the indie boot because to me, that was just like the most iconic um, thing that linked to my childhood. And it really just spurred on this, this fascination. And uh, I remember seeing in your interview with Ben at Stitch Down, you talked about how you, your, I think it was your grandpa gifted you a pair of cigar alden cigar shell cord of in long wings exactly yeah. yeah and i was just wondering like was that your 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 aha moment your pinnacle moment where you're like okay this is this is resonating with me or or what what, what was it for you that sort of started your journey would you say yeah and i i'm i'm wondering i don't really remember if that was my very first one because it was right around that time that's when i decided to to go around to a couple stores and, and learn about boots and go to a couple tanneries before going to China, um, to the factory. And, um, it was right around that time where I got a couple pair of Aldens, you know, but that one for sure, that was one that I had picked out, um, that, yeah, I mean, for anyone, it's probably you're right up there, you know, a cigar shell, a long wing from Alden. So, uh, yeah, when you hold that thing in your hand, you're like, yeah, this is, and they do their long wing really well in shell. It's not an easy one to make at all. And right. so, um, yeah, that was a really cool shoe. And then, yeah, when I had that, I was, 
yeah, yeah, I wore it constantly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and it had a very sad ending. Um, no. <laughs> I did, I love that shoe and I, I wore it all the time. And I mean, it, but it aged really well and it, you know, it, it was fine, but I wore it for probably four or five years or something. Um, no, no, let me think. So I, I lost that shoe in, in 2000 and what is it now, 2020? I lost it in 2017. Oh my so god! Really? I didn't physically lose it, but so my wife and I were living in an apartment and in in China, and there was like a typhoon. Uh -huh. And I was back in the U.S. Uh, and for like a one week work trip, and it was like the worst typhoon in the last twenty something years in Southeast China. And we're in the thirty first floor. Oh wow! <laughs> so bad that like I was on the phone I, I was you know FaceTiming or something it was like three o'clock in the morning like she's like the building's like swaying type of situation you oh. know uh the building next to us they lost their satellite it landed on our balcony um oh my but God. long story short our whole apartment flooded four or five inches of water from rain coming through the glass door on the balcony oh my god I probably had 10 15 pair of shoes underneath my bed at uh, the time and I was that was one of the pairs and you know they ended up going in the trash uh, because I I was back here and like you know my wife was more concerned with like um all of our things and the, a cat and <laughs> whatever else was going on in there at the time I mean it was a total mess and uh she didn't even realize that, you know, there was, I had things in there on the floor. I'm sure some of this she saw, but yeah, it, it totally destroyed like 10 pair of shoes. Some of them, you know, just random majority you know, being Alden's and in our stuff. And, and I was just like, oh, yeah, it, it was a bummer for sure. Because yeah, that, that was one of the most beautiful shoes. I actually had a photo of it. I cleaned it and, and took a photo of it and sent it to like my grandpa and maybe, yeah, someone else. And uh, yeah, it looked amazing. Um, that was probably just a few months before that happened. But uh, yeah, that, that, that was probably my really first shoe that I just absolutely loved. And then, yeah, uh, you know, I was working for the factory that turned into being, I, I would do the production um, for a couple of the customers, but I was doing a lot of development as well. So that, that's kind of when I really enjoyed it was because I could sit there and I kind of had free reign to, to make samples. Um, right. as long as like it was within range and something I would actually produce to, to present to someone. So yeah, I mean that, that's when I really started to enjoy it because I could make different, you know, I could order different materials and, you know, play with stuff in the warehouse and try different bottoms and things like that. And so that's when I, I really, really started to like it, you know? Okay. I got you. I got you. That's, that's awesome. That's thank you. That's, that's a really great story. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's a sad story. <laughs> Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's something that I think you're hitting on something that really resonates with a lot of us because uh, I know a lot of my friends on Instagram, they ask if your house was burning down, what, what's the shoe or boot that you would run in and grab and snatch? Yeah. And my answer to that is um, all of them. Like I'm going in, if, if, if the house is burning down, I'm making multiple trips. I'm going in and out and I'm grabbing as much as I can <laughs> until right. I physically can't anymore but um but yeah because that's just that's a really impossible question to answer but it is something that goes through our heads it's like we love this stuff we invest a lot of money into it and we we never want to lose it you know what i mean it's like and especially something as braille as like a whiskey shell cordovan long wing blucher or something like this a natural shell cordovan plain toe boot i would never want to lose this you know it's just like the thought of that is just heartbreaking you know i mean obviously you know it, it it's just you you really the more you collect and the more you study about this stuff and the more you get into it the more the more of an attachment you have with these things especially you know like in your case your grandpa gifted those to you so i'm sure that was just that was a tough one to deal with but yeah you wouldn't think that you'd yeah you know how you can lose a pair of shoes and in, in some way or another so yeah i didn't ever anticipate that happening but uh yeah you'd, you're into watches before this and it's it's pretty similar you see a lot of parallel there with people who, you know, are like, are get, really get into watches and, yes, it, you know, it's, it's similarly just as dangerous or, or worse. And 
the only upside is you might put it in a safe for the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> they're going on a rack somewhere by, by the garage. So, uh, right. Right. Yeah, it, it is, it, it turns into one of those. Cause I've noticed a lot of customers, it's, it's almost rare for them just to have like two pair, um, yeah. you know, and, and somewhere to like, uh, people who are really into watches. Yes, know. it's true. And yeah, speaking of putting watches in the safe, I have a gun safe where I, I keep my watches in. So I only wear one watch at a time. But when I travel, I actually, I have enough room to fit two pairs of boots in that safe. And yep. since the last time that I traveled, I, I threw I threw the uh, your Ottawa natural shells in there. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, I threw them in there because I'm like, if it, I'm not losing these, that's for sure. <laughs> and, uh, and that's another reason you know people ask me you know how many pairs of boots do you have why do you have so many pairs of boots but to be honest if you went from watches to boots you would know that you know these these watches are expensive I mean I'd, I'd buy a watch and pay it off and it would take me a year to pay it off or a nice pair of boots it's like a car payment you know what I mean like it's it's much yeah it sounds expensive like three four five hundred dollars it sounds expensive but it, ultimately like you're getting this stuff for life you know it's a one-time right. payment and you have it forever hello like that's a wonderful investment in my opinion compared you know compared to watches like watches I, I stopped at five nice watches but even then like oh my god it, like it took me years to acquire them and to pay them all off you know and and it's just it's just one of those things that's why I could stomach buying boots at, at sort of the rate that I do and in the quantity that I do because you know it's it's in comparison it's like a car payment compared to a mortgage <laughs> so. right and, and there's also kind of like a tier there which i, I know a lot of like um, men's boutique retailers will kind of reference or have in the past uh, like my dad is just especially in men's footwear uh or, or men's apparel because women's footwear is a little bit different i mean a lot of women will spend money on on the shoes they like but yeah. for men it's it's very um it's very common for them to go in and spend you know, close to a thousand dollars on a jacket and or suit and yes. very, very likely that their footwear doesn't exceed $200. Very, yeah. very likely. And they might wear that footwear with three or four other suits. And this is coming from like men's boutique, you know, a suit, you know, suit shops and things like that. That's very, very common where for whatever reason for men, it, it's common for the footwear to be probably the area people will spend the least amount on. Um, and I mean, we live here, in, you know, two hours from Chicago, hour and a half. And, um, you know, a few of us will go take a ride to Chicago and go into stores and just kind of look around, go to some denim shops and stuff and look at things, uh, leather shop. And uh, it's amazing that, you know, in Chicago, if you asked me, hey, where do I go browse some Goodyear Well footwear? It doesn't exist. Right. right. In Chicago, you have an Allen Edmonds store mm -hmm. it doesn't exist outside of that. You can go to your, your Ralph Lauren polo, you know, store and things like that, which on the shelf, I mean, next to nothing there. I don't think they have any Crockett and Jones anything anymore. Um, All right. And I mean, not Ralph Lauren around the world will, will have like, you know, two or three pair of Crockett and Jones or something. And then you've got, uh, I, I know there's, um, the denim shop there. I forgot, I forgot what they're called there, but and they're, they're in Chicago. Um, they'll have, you know, a couple, a couple pair of Alden and, and things like that. But I mean, it, the footwear world that way, it's, it's pretty strange. We have a place like Chicago in Goodyear Weld. I mean, you, there's nowhere to go. Um, Oak Street might have a couple pairs at a, at a shop, maybe like one shop there or something. So it's just, it's very, and it's, it wasn't like, it was off the beaten path a little bit for us. And so we ended up making it over there, but yeah, yeah it, it's, it's definitely a strange little thing um, to go to a city like that. And we're like, Hey, let's go to a, a good, well, you know, let's go check out some shoes and stuff. And, and, and you go to one or two stores. Um, yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. And it's mild, mild blend. That's the store. And mild blend supply code. Yeah. 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 I'm familiar with them. Yes. Yeah, I ordered some uh, of of some really nice Aldens and maybe some Red Wing. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I ordered my some of my thorough good roofer boots from that from Mild Blend. So yeah, so yeah, I'm familiar with them. Yeah, and and you're so right because I'm I'm sort of in between Baltimore and DC, and uh, even here, like there there was one there was one store in Baltimore that sold they sh they sold Trickers and they sold Aldens. 
but they were only around for like a couple of years. And then, you know, the, the guy that owned the shop, he was an older guy and he just, he just shut things down. I don't, I don't know. You know, I just assume that cause, cause yeah, guys aren't into expensive, you know, speaking generally, most guys are not into expensive footwear. And uh, it, it's kind of like when I have a conversation with my coworkers, it's like, yeah, you know, these cost a few hundred dollars. They're like, what, what? And, you know, but, but the mental perception of like something like a watch, like a $6,000 watch is a little bit more acceptable to them for some reason. But in, in most, most guys' minds, it's like your shoe should cost $50 or $80, you know, it's just, <laughs> right. And it's, you know, um, so it, it really is sort of an, an, a process of educating yourself on the level of workmanship and the, the, the quality of the materials and all these things. And, you know, I, I I've been meaning to talk about this in one of my videos, actually, and I just never got around to it, but it's sort of that, that your, your introduction to Goodyear Welt, you know, that a lot of companies, they talk about, well, what's a Goodyear Welt? Yes, it can be resold as many times as possible. And it's sort of to get you into that first pair, you know, it's like, because once you're in that first pair, then you see the difference. It's like stepping into a new dimension almost that you never knew existed. It's like, once you try this stuff out, now you will never look back. Like there is literally no way I'll ever look back from this stuff. Like there's no way I will re regress after wearing something at, of this, at this level, there's no regressing from this, you know? Um, but it's, it's a matter of, you, you have to, ed it's, it's educating people that, you know, a factory printed shoe is not going to be the same as a handmade welted Goodyear welt. And, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's one thing that, yeah, once I, once I got into it, it I was, there was no never turning back. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a really tough thing because it, you almost have to have someone just try it blindly because a lot of times too, it, it's about like the support. And, you know, if we sit here and inspect shoes or something, I mean, I'm only 30 years old. Um, but you know, if I wear, you know, a, a sneaker with a flat bottom or something, yeah, it, it does not feel as good um, as wearing a boot or a shoe with a last and, you know, that actually fits and stuff like that. It's just completely different. Totally. Uh, yeah. And so when there's support involved, um, but that's really hard to explain. It's hard to market and yeah. people usually don't, you know, they don't, um, I guess, respond very well to that for some reason. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just change. yeah, it's more about the look. It's more about the leather and, and yeah. that's about it. But yeah, the fit, it's, it's a huge thing. And I know a lot of people, um, Will tend to, to say, well, hey, it's it's summer and I'm wearing sneakers because they're cooler. And, right. you know, yeah, I mean, if you put, you know, if they've never worn one, but if you wear like a thin wool sock and you wear a good well shoe with a leather insole, regardless of the brand, you know, as long as it's up there, um, it's very, very cool. And of right. course, everyone's a little bit different, but, you know, it can be, it can be cooler than wearing, you know, a light little van sneaker, you know, uh, right. just because the fabric, the, the man-made fabric, does not react the same against your skin as, as the veg tan leather insole or, or lining does. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it, it's tough to explain it and it's tough to kind of, you know, we try to talk about it a little bit, but yes, it's, you don't have to try, you know, people have to try that to, to feel it. You do, you do. And, and that's, that's one thing. So many people I notice they have this idea that if it's lightweight, that it's better or it's more comfortable because it's lightweight and airy. And to me, I can't stand those lightweight, airy sneakers. Like there's just something about it. I just, same thing with a watch. Like I love my Panerai and I love, I love my heavy clunky watches because they have a presence on my wrist, on my body. So when I'm going through the day, it's like, I never forget they're there. And I like that. And I, you know what? I feel more manly in a, in a heavy pair of boots. You know, these boots, like you said, they're what, four or five, six pounds. Or, yeah. yeah, and yeah, just about four and a half pounds. Yeah, just the boots himself, probably. Yeah, 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 four and a half pounds. And I, I love that. I would never, the, the, the amount of support that you get from it so, is so much more than a sneaker. And these sneakers, oh, I got like, uh, don't get, I hate, I hate to bash anything, but sneakers is one thing that I, I just can't stand. Like, I, I have a pair of, I only keep one pair of running shoes at all times. And once they're, once they're done, they're done, and I get another pair, but I don't wear them for fashion i don't wear them day to day because i just i don't feel like i'm seizing the day like i should be like there's something about putting on a pair of boots every day it's like my ritual you know i wake up i take a shower and it's like okay now it's time to put on the uniform what pair of boots what pair of denim you know <laughs> sure get, get yeah. a uniform up <laughs> it is. i mean i 
I, I do. I, I mean, I like certain sneakers. Like I'll have some vans laying around and everything for, you know, around the house or riding bikes or whatever it is. But, yeah. you know, if I, if I wear them to the office for a day or two, I, I do. Um, it's just a different feeling for me. And the support wise, they're not as comfortable. That's all, you know, simply put, not as comfortable. They get very, very hot, especially, I mean, today it's probably 90 degrees in the warehouse. We just finished packing up this morning. I mean, it's, it has to, you know, at that time it was probably 80 outside, but probably 90 in the, in the warehouse and humid. So it's like, okay. you know, yeah, you get very hot. Um, yes. and, and so, yeah, just, I don't know. It's always, always wearing, you know, uh, you know, a leather sneaker or, I mean, a leather shoe or boot has always been a little more comfortable for me, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Me too. And not to mention, you just feel more, you feel more proper and you feel more qualified for me anyways, I feel more qualified to be myself when I'm in a proper outfit. You know what I mean? Like I don't, something about when I leave the house without my watch, I just, I feel naked. And same thing with a, with a boot. Like if I walk, if I, if I'm going to go on a walk with my family and I'm in flip flops, I feel naked because I feel like I should be in my boots. <laughs> so yeah. There's like yeah. an iconic feeling to it, you know? <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely a, a culture to that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's, and, and, yeah, I'm not sure how that works out for the Good Your Wealth uh, community or brands, uh, you know, yeah. how it continues to go casual. I, I'm not sure how that plays out, you know, whether it comes back or not. I know right. uh, I was talking to someone here in Michigan who has a suit shop who sells Southwick shoot, uh, suits. And okay. uh, he was saying, yeah, I mean, it's it's okay. Like, it's it's coming back a little bit, you know, but nothing more than just kind of a wave, you know, waves and, and, and how it, how it works, but people yeah. still do dress up a little bit. And of course, I mean, the majority of our collection, they're not even for people who wear suits, you know, they, they might be wearing more of a dress shoe. So it, it, yeah, somewhere in the middle, you know, it's, it's for um, someone who likes to kind of look at an item and kind of get into it a little bit and then and try different things, you know, whether it's, it's watches or, you know, denim or boots or something like that, you know. Right. Definitely. Definitely. That's true. And I think, I think your, your boots and your shoes are just, they're so perfectly polished and not polished in the sense of yeah. the, the leather, the upper is polished, but in the sense of the design, I mean, you take just the best aspects, the dimensionality, just everything. So from the, the roundness of the toe to, or yeah, let's see, for example, the, the thickness of the leather, just, the angulature, just everything about it, the dimensionality is just so perfectly polished off, if that makes sense. I, yeah. really, I really like how versatile they are and just, yeah, you could you could wear the stuff with literally anything and you could, like me, sometimes I go semi-dress, I throw on a blazer, pocket square, a tie, and these just, these go so well with a t-shirt and denim and up to khakis and a, and a blazer. I mean, these take you from work to casual you sure. know, in heartbeat, you know and that's kind of what i liked about the alden you know the alden models as well it's like the the application the, the range of dressiness that they can pull off is so broad whereas like you know you, you look at like a red wing motto and those are clearly you, you're not throwing those on with a with a suit jacket like clearly <laughs> so, right. right yeah it's 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 true. So yeah, I, I really love, I really love your design. One of the things that really got me in love with your derbies was this little cross stitch right here. I don't even know what you yeah. call them. Yeah. And that's all it is. I mean, that's just a, um, a little lock stitch done by hand and it's just a thicker thread and yeah, just decided to do something a little bit different. Um, for some people that, yeah, that's, they don't love that. And then for some others, it's like, well, it's, I guess it's specific to this brand and, and that, and their pattern so yeah yeah it's you know it's it's a very very basic blucher pattern and yeah. whatever if you actually you know put them side by side and of course people do that and and, and look at them they all look a little bit different you know they all have their own little uh character oh yeah definitely definitely but yeah to me that's that makes your blucher right there in my opinion that's what you know because i wasn't even into uh derby yeah for sure yeah you know it's because i thought oh it's so it's just such a plain style but no like that little cross on there for some reason just really resonated with me and this is the perfect derby by the way i mean this thing thank you oh, yeah i just these these are my favorite derbies hands down so yeah just super super excited especially especially about all the new makeups that you guys 
have been coming out with. So, yeah, you, you guys really hit it out of the park. More than, than usual here the last the last few months, and it was timed well with everything going on, and we yeah. don't have a bunch of new inventory, so we've been trying to to keep the interest going and, and bringing out something you know new and different without having to you know rebuild our inventory every three months you know so right kind of stay on that trend a little bit and and still offer something new for our current customer you know without um you know going a year or two without anything new you know? yeah definitely definitely well one one customer that i have to that i have to give a shout out to here is uh and he's definitely one of your biggest customers on Instagram. Uh, what's his name? Um, a U dog, a U yeah. dog, yeah. you know, yeah. he literally gets every single grant stone release. Like, like how does that work? <laughs> like, I don't know. He, he just, um, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but no, he, I think he likes the last and the fit. And then, you yeah. know, he sent a good belt footwear as it is. And so he right. just, once he found the Leo last and everything, he, he just, he literally, uh, yeah, he has everyone. And, uh, right. we, did, we did an interview with him because he lives not far from here. And so, Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So at the time I, I was like, you know, we, we, we would do a journal every, every couple of months or something. And so I'm like, this would be a, an interesting topic. Just kind of how did he get started? Why could you want footwear and just kind of the basics. And okay. so we actually met up with him, um, I, I was stuck in an airport, and so I, I missed the meeting uh, but, uh, from 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 New York. But uh, yeah, so they they met met up with them, and and our photographer got some photos and stuff. We did a journal, just kind of highlighting, you know, how he got into footwear and and um, you know okay. why why he does, you know has this interest, you know. Cool, yeah, because I I DM with them sometimes, and uh, yeah, he's he's a he's a real cool guy, really nice guy. Apparently, the AU in his Instagram handle stands for gold, the AU, like the molecular right. AU, and then dog. Oh, so the gold stands for his golden retriever. So AU means gold and dog, gold dog, it means golden retriever. So yeah. that's <laughs> uh, majority of his, his, his uh, photos have, have his puppies in the background. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I just noticed like, it's like clockwork. Like you guys release a new makeup and within days he has, he has, yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, he, awesome. has been, he has been a very, very good customer. Yeah. He's, he's a very good one. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. He's, he's a nice guy. Yeah. So, and actually you mentioned uh, John. So uh, I wanted to kind of ask you one more question. Um, so like you seem to really be the personality of Grant Stone, but I noticed that you know you do have some other employees that work for the brand and um yeah. i'm just curious like are you sort of like the official like spokesperson for the brand or did, is it just sort of more natural because you you know you, you have how's that how's that work it, you, you just you, you present better or or are the other ones shy or how's that work <laughs> no no we we don't even really have titles or anything like that um because i mean really it was it was just me for the first uh first two years, I think, two and a half years. Okay. And then Josh, who's my, you know, family friend who I grew up with, um, he came in, uh, visited us in China and lived there for a few months and stuff to get started. Um, and Josh was kind of doing at the time kind of more like the inventory shipping and stuff like that. And then, uh, just, just last year we added a third person, um, who yeah. does, who's now kind of taken over that part of it and into customer service. And so it's really just more or less a product of, of having, you know, one, two, three people now, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that, that's about it. Parker's been with us for probably about a year now. And, and Josh, I want to say came over to China. He probably started in like 2017 or 18 now, 17. I can't remember. Yeah. Nice. So, cool. cool. Yeah. Well, he's over there. If he wants to say hi, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey Josh. Hey, you want to come over here for a minute? <laughs> yeah, he he'll grab a chair. Here, here, grab a chair real quick. Yeah, come say hello. Dale? Yeah, this is Dale. Just an informal thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Hey guys, how you doing, Dale? Ben, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Parker and Josh were shy. I'm like, no. Not really. <laughs> yeah, not you know, we're just 
small business hanging out. It's a nice, quiet office. And so um, I nice. was over here chit-chatting. We finished packing up this morning. and Cool. You know, nice. Good you know. deal. I have, I have your, uh, your John Hancock right here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just um, – yeah, I see. I see that you know it's it's sort of like I always see Wyatt getting the interviews, and I'm always just curious. Like I know there's other names and faces behind the brand, but I never like get the get the photo or the you know the sort of introduction. So this is this is good. This is good. I'm glad to. Yeah. yeah. Glad to be on the screen. <laughs> you, did you start? Did you come to China in seventeen or eighteen? I flew over there in 2016. That was 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was. That's a lot longer. Okay. I remember because the first few months was the first was when Trump, you know, started his presidential, <laughs> and you know every single every single morning going to work, whether we took the bus or the taxi, it was like you know hot topic, you know. So I, I just remember right. that for sure. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how I remember that. So. Um, good times <laughs> cool so you've been with the you've been with Grantstone for a few years then um yeah. so did, so how, how how does the design process work did, who who sort of makes the decision or the proposal for like each makeup do you guys kind of all get together and sort of come to a consensus on what to do next or how's that work that's why it's department right there oh, okay yeah. Yeah. initially that was kind of one day to forever, you know, we, we have, you know, five, 10 people. Yeah. I, I would hope I would like to do that, you know, continue to do that. So yeah, I usually spend, I mean, that's, that's what I try to um, try to spend a couple of days out of a week, putting some, some thought and everything into that and kind of developing for, you know, one and a half, two years down the road. And, and so that's, I'm mainly doing that. And I, I've got a coworker, Wendy, I mean, it's the factory, but I mean, she might as well be, you know, uh, a Grantstone employee at this point. I mean, she just has been there since we started. I mean, she's the one who made all the samples since day one for, for Grantstone and, and um, in the factory, in the office there. So and she's still very hands-on. So she's a big help. Yes. I mean, it's, it's kind of back and forth with her, you know, every day on, on sampling and development, commercialization, uh, wear test, fitting, and so she kind of hand, she handles all like the development side. And so that's kind of my contact for that. So okay. I, yeah, like we will say like, well, there's three people for Grantstone, but you know, my wife, she works um, a couple days a week doing the accounting and inventory part of it. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the factory, I mean, we have two or three people who are spending a lot of their time on, on Grantstone as well. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. The development side of things. And, and then of course, you know, the 15 or so people that, that actually make the shoes for, you know, our inventory. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So, so John, I got to ask, uh, I got to ask Wyatt about his favorite uh, styles of Grant Stones that he wears. So, what's yours? I mean, I'm I'm big into the Ottawa's and into the Diesels and stuff. So, do you wear like do you like what's what's your rotation look like? I would I would say. <laughs> I'm a heavy boot and loafer guy. You know. Okay. I, uh, today I'm wearing the ivory penny loafers and. Um, I had to make sure to get a new pair of those before before they all ran out, and uh, right. been enjoying those. I always find myself gravitate towards loafers on the way out. You have something in your hands, slip that on. It's quick, it's easy, um, it's comfortable, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I really do. I'm I'm boots and loafers pretty much all day. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, that that's funny because growing up, my dad was a big loafer guy, and I think that has something to do with me, like not gravitating towards loafers so much because he used to actually I was right with you dale i was right with you i was thinking like you sure penny loafers before something you know he's like yeah you know just just try it you know and i just tried it and i i've, I've never left it so right um, yeah yeah yeah, they're great. yeah for sure my dad he used to um he was real bad he would step on the back of the loafer so he would just he would crush the back down and he would just walk around in them like, like slippers. And I think that has something to do with me psychologically, not, not hopping on the loafer train as much as the boot train, you know, I'm more, uh, I'm more about the boots now, but, uh, but they do look very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was my dad. Well, <laughs> well, next on the list is the tassel loafer. You know, it's kind of, I'm kind of restarting again. Cause they're like, 
you know, tassel low for Adam, they're cool, but I probably won't wear them too much, you know, so right now he might be wearing tassel low for those. Yeah, time. I'm the same, a penny low for guy right now, so. Oh, okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, the, the tassel, like, it's just a, another step further. Like, I know right. I love it, but I'm not a tassel loafer guy myself personally. Yeah. <laughs> but However, I understand if you're dressing up menswear, you know, that tassel, that tassel looks sharp too. So, you know, it does. Know. It definitely does. Yeah. And actually, on the Stitch Down podcast, they talked about this recently. Ben, he was talking about how he has it in his head, like the, uh, the doctor that you'd go to when you were a kid would always have tassel loafers. <laughs> And I thought, yeah, that's true. All my doctors had tassel loafers. <laughs> yeah, well, and it makes sense. It's super Ivy League. I mean, yeah, Mr. It Carlo is. was he's a Harvard graduate, and he, you know they developed a tassel loafer. So right, you know, right. it can't be any more of a you know out east, out east Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York style shoe. And when it is, if you're in the train and the subway, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of guys. Uh, wearing wearing suits or, or even casual wearing those tassel loafers you know that's true in high school that was like you know you dress up for a varsity basketball game or something during the day you know and right a pair of tassel loafers it's funny you said you know your dad's loafers right well i i end up using my dad's tassel loafers for a couple of game days and i end up keeping those for the rest of the season yeah and, uh, i'm sure <laughs> that's all i've ever worn so looking forward to our our release yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Me too. Me too. I mean, you guys do the loafers just great. I mean, I'm always on the fence. Like, do I want to start going down the loafer? Because I'm already so addicted to boots. I, I have so many pairs of boots now that uh, I'm just afraid to break into loafers because I know once I do, I'm going to need like 10 pairs on them. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, kinda, that's another point of hesitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> so, so what boots do you like, John? Do you, do you like, do you prefer the, uh, the diesel or the Ottawa or the cap too? I'm a diesel. I'm a diesel and an Ottawa guy. I, uh, you know, I've got a pair that I definitely work in at my house, you know, whether it be outside, inside, um, you know, I got a beat em up diesel pair. And then, okay. you know, what color? I feel like you can dress up the Ottawa a little bit easier. Um, yeah, you can, you can. So, so what, what colors would you say you have like the Chrome Excels or? Yeah. Yeah, okay. doing chrome cell. That's I try to keep that one looking nice, you know. But I've got yeah. a I've got a pair of of uh, the old Castaño diesel boot. Oh right, um, that's a fantastic that's, makeup. That thing that thing's got some miles and some wear and tear on it for sure. Oh, I'm sure. Still looking sure. good. You know? Still yeah. pop that thing up, wear it out, no big deal. But yeah, yeah. You know, my fiance kind of was like, yeah, you should polish those. Right. <laughs> Well, you, know, you know, Josh had one of the, uh, I think one of your first pair, of, well, I mean, it wasn't maybe your first couple pair of boots, but it was that Color 8, that Color 8 Chrome Excel with oh, a yeah. wedge sole on it. It was just a sample that we made back in like 16 or something. Still and, have it. Yeah. yeah, that was a pretty cool boot. Yeah, yeah. I remember you wore that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, putting some wear and tear on that cavity. And I, uh, I mean, I wore that for three years a lot. And the cavity still worked nice for me. Now I'm, I'm three and a half years in and it's definitely worn down, you know, get a little wet, you know, can slip, get a little slick, but I still wear it once in a while. Cool. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. That's so cool to hear. I love hearing, you know, about your, your, your personal boots and your personal experiences with the boots. To me, that's like the coolest thing, like as a consumer, as a customer, I really like to, to sort of resonate with the makers themselves and the people behind the brand. Like, how do you wear your boots? How do you wear your shoes? How do you treat, how do you deal with them? You know, in certain, in different weathers and things like that. And yet speaking of diesel boots, like this is my first pair of Grant Stones in, in Dune Chrome XL. And uh, my God, they broke in so fast and they just, they form such an amazing patina. They've got all these really cool like scratches on the back and just, really neat like indigo crocking all over the place and me personally i love i love the blemishes and i love i love beating them up and and this pair really looks good beat up so <laughs> uh, sure does yeah absolutely absolutely yeah so well cool man it's good to meet you yeah i, I uh I, I know you know because I, I never know quite who i'm talking to when i message grant stone through their dms like 
I, right. I, the longest time I assumed it was Wyatt, but then um, I asked for this interview and um, it was somebody else talking. I don't know. It might've been you or it might've been somebody else. Well, yeah, it was actually, it was me. Yeah. So like all the Instagram stuff, um, all the social media stuff is usually me. Josh will do, uh, he has his own. Done it. Yeah. We were sharing it for a while and it yeah. seemed to be a little bit, Hey, did you do it? Hey, did you, you know, so he's definitely spreading social media right now and it's working out nice. And, um, and you have your own style for him. You'll do, yeah, help, help I'll on jump in style for him. And, yeah. Oh, oh, so you're on style form. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, do, yeah. do you operate under like the Grant Stone title or how's that work? Or is it no, just no, you'll name? see me on there. I, I use the, I use the logo, but I, it says my name, Josh Lang on there. So. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I'll have to look out for that then. Cool. And yeah. do you have your own personal Instagram account or is that? You do. Oh, yeah. okay, you do. Okay. S sweet. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool to get to meet you guys and like to, you know, put names to faces and all this. So Likewise, yeah. and thanks for all your help. You know, we've been, you know, through customer service, emails, phone calls. I mean, I've heard, I've heard it more times than I can remember. Yes. Yeah. I, I saw this video, and the Tarago spray and, and, and the, uh, the yeah. six months or the month where the unboxing, you know, we hear right. a lot of review on, on what you do and we appreciate it. Oh, cool. That's really good to know. That is awesome. Yeah. That's so great to hear because, you know, I love your guys' brand and I'm happy that I could help, you know, in, in, in a way that, that brings it, because this is an amazing time, you know, with Instagram and with YouTube, like you don't need to pay professional advertisers anymore. Now it's like sort of customers trust other customers. And so they can keep that ball rolling in that way. And I, I'm really happy to be able to introduce, um, to introduce your guys' boots to, other guys like myself, because I was going to bring this up earlier, actually. The first time I ever heard of Grant Stone was uh, Andrew Carr. He posted these diesel boots on, uh, his, his name's N8 Cairo. I'm sure you guys heard of him. That was the first time I ever heard of Grant Stone. I'm like, those are nice. And so that was my introduction probably four years ago now, five years. So, so yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and in this boot enthusiast community, we just keep the ball rolling. You know, we, we find nice stuff. We, we share it with our friends and the network just sort of it grows and, and it becomes more, you know, you get the word out very efficiently that way to people that are actually interested. So, so right. I'm just I'm honored that I could actually help you guys because I think you guys are doing a really good thing here and uh, I love your brand and, and yeah, just uh, it, it's, it's my, it's my honor to be able to, you know, to, to share the good word in other words. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. um, yeah, I was going to say, well, that, that's all I had for now. I think we've been going for a little bit. Oh my God. Two and a half, <laughs> two yeah. and a half hours. Yeah. It's a long one. Yeah. Nice and short, <laughs> but yeah, exactly. yeah, me personally, I appreciate long form discussion. That's where you get, that's where you get the, the real soul of the conversation is through like a long form discussion. So um, I, I'm really happy that we were able to do this and, uh, I can't wait to post it, you know, to YouTube and let all the fellow boot enthusiasts, you know, uh, watch it and, and sort of hear, hear the, hear the message from your words themselves instead of me just talking into my iPhone, you know, like I normally do with the videos. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, thanks for asking because it is, it's, um, sometimes most may not realize, you know, how, um, how small this little niche is and, and, yeah. you know, our type of business. And, uh, I mean, the majority of our customers, they come from Reddit style form and the likes of your reviews. I mean, that is right. the majority in it, over 50% are coming from Reddit style form and are looking at a YouTube video. I, yeah. I think it would actually be very, very rare for someone to, you know, see, a picture on Instagram, go on our website and buy, you know, that, that'd be very, very rare. You know, they're, they're going to start researching they're going to go through style form, Reddit, YouTube. Um, yeah. And so I mean that, that's the, that's the majority. Okay. I got you. Well, that's good. And, and again, it's my honor because I fully believe in what you guys are doing. I, I love your products and, you know, thank you for getting some rare shell in my collection because otherwise I wouldn't have any. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, John, it was good to meet you, man. I uh, hope to hope to talk to you again soon here shortly. And uh, this was fun. We'll have to do this again. I think I think uh, I think my followers are going to like it. And I think, uh, 
you know, yeah, I, think, I think this was just a lot of fun, to be honest. So. <laughs> it was, and I'm happy to anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Well, cool, guys. Well, we'll, uh, we'll close it up now. But, uh, but yeah, I can't wait to talk to you guys again soon. And uh, y'all take care. <laughs> yeah, take All right. care. You too. you too. Thanks. Thanks again. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye-bye.